Ooh. Ooh. Put on my headphones while we were in between songs and I couldn't hear anything and I was like, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Did shit break already? But no, everything's fine. <laughs> we had a moment. Uh, anyway, hello, hi. Uh, the lighting is fucking garbage and I'm sorry, there's not much I can do about it. We don't have blackout curtains and I'm not usually live this early, so I'm gonna... Is it better if I just turn off the ring light for the time being? Okay, it actually is. At least it's better. Yeah. Oh, we need blackout curtains. Anyway. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm here. Hello. Not read book, but I am here to vibe. There's stuff. No shit. You're right. Hold on. Let me. First of all, let me show you the book club scene. Let me fuck with the webcam real fast. Uh, configure. Haha, -ha, advanced settings. I promise I, like, remember all the things you teach me about stream. I just don't have to adjust my webcam very much, so I, like, truly forget that it's, like, a thing. Because <laughs> since I stream at the same time, I usually don't have to change it that much. There we go. Now y'all can see my face. Ooh. DMG is stuff. All right, hold on. Yeah, that's effectively... Boom, you did it. Yep. I I don't mess with my webcam settings too much because I tend to stream at the same time. So, honestly, the goal is blackout curtains. So I can just not have to worry about the natural lighting shit. So, I'm sure I'll have to put that back later. Thank y'all. But hello. Welcome to the, to the book club stream. Just not to throw shade at anybody. Who read the book? Because I know, Leaf, I know you were moving, so I figured you probably didn't have time. <clears throat> you read it. Oh, that's right. You said you were going to read it on the plane or something, I think is what you told me. I'm amazed you found time to read in uh, in Hawaii. Oh, you also follow Piper? Fabulous, I love this for you. Okay, so I was right in thinking you would like the book. You did tell me you were not going to read it, so no, that's fine. No, you absolutely have been dying. Like I said, I literally assumed you hadn't read it because you were doing shit. So... First things first. Do I want to address this? Yeah, I guess I do. <sighs> Just to get serious for like two seconds. Some shit went down in the United States today. I said it in Discord. I'll say it again one more time. It's 
community is pro-choice. This community is pro-LGBT. This community is pro-human rights. If you have an issue with that, do what you need to do. That, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> so now that we've addressed that, back to the fun. Ooh, I, P Piper seems pretty active on, um, Instagram. So, I did DM her about this stream and she did not answer me, but she also posted on her Instagram stories about how she needed to check her DMs less. So, like, that's fair. That's super fair. Ramada didn't handle the review request, Kusha. I'm glad you managed that, Leaf, because truly, I, like, barely even know where that menu is. I'm too busy being live to, like, look at it most of the time, I hate to say. But, for those who did not read, there's the cover. It's very pretty. Um, I think Piper is coming out with a second edition of this that is going to be a little bit more... Um, like, Ooh. thank you, Leafs. Um, this is a first edition, so she's gonna do a more edited version. It's gonna do a re-release, I think. Will I buy the re-release? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I definitely want to pick up the other books when they come out. So, so <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it. Zendel was not a mod for more than like two minutes. <laughs> It was, it was 100% a shit post. But let me pull up a synopsis of the book. Um, so that those who didn't read the book have an idea of what's going on. All right. So the overview on, per the Barnes and Noble website, Post it in chat so y'all can read along. Fairley is just an orphanage. At least, that's what the church would have the people believe, but the beautiful orphans Knox and the Fae Touch Tamaras know better. They are commodities for sale, available for purchase by the highest bidder. So when the madame of a notorious brothel in a far-off city offers a king's ransom to purchase Amaras, Knox ends up taking her place. Well, Amaris is drawn away to the mountains, home of mysterious assassins. That's such a fucking understatement. Even as they take up new lives and identities, Nox and Amaris never forget one thing. They will stop at nothing to reunite. But the threat of war looms overhead, and the two are inevitably swept into a conflict between human and fey, magic and mundane. With strange new alliances, untested powers, and a bond that neither time nor distance could possibly break, the fate of the realms lies in the hands of two orphans, and the love they hold for one another. It is... I had a lot of fun with it, personally. Like, it's it's a little goofy, but I liked it. I have notes, so I can talk about it and not just immediately forget everything. How dare you use Naruto? Becca, in all seriousness, if you want to apply for modship, apply for modship. I've applied for modship in your stream. Um, And I'm not like just automatically approving everyone like right off the bat I'm just kind of seeing who applies and um just wanting to add a couple of people so like if Leaf can't be here one night and like Axanthor is busy and Swift is also but like you know, having having three mods is enough like a good amount of the time I'm just trying to have some um a couple other people so that, that way we have all of our bases covered so like if leaf is the only mod in chat one night and leaf has to like go do something i'm obviously not gonna stop him um and that's fine but it means like then i have to mod for my own chat and that's a lot i heard automatic approval hello himbo how are you I do think you'd be a good mod, Becca. Like, I talk to you about stream stuff all the time anyway. Yeah, mods are tricky. Yeah, like, I don't want to have, like, 20 mods or something. It's just sometimes three is not enough because people have lives. Suddenly you have one who wants to stick paper on your face all the time. Yeah. Dude, Hawaii. I've been loving all the Hawaii pictures. Becca and Himbo. 
Uh, for those that don't know, they're married. Um, sorry, spoilers. Um, <laughs> um, but no, Hawaii looks beautiful. But yeah, no, if, here, if you were interested in applying for mod ship, it's in the discord, but just to make things real simple, there you go. Spoilers in this chat? I know. Uh, to be fair. Oh, I need to fucking move that. Becca, thank you for gifting a sub to Himbo. Himbo, welcome to the library. I hope you enjoy your time and enjoy your fun little emotes. I need to move that alert. Good to fucking know. Don't embarrass me with the lack of subscribing. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I did not realize that alert was in such a terrible place. Whoopsie! I'll I'll move it later. I need to figure out where the best place to put that is. Yeah! Sapphire made them. So Sapphire made the dabbing Gengar, the um the fading in Gengar, the GG emote, and the laughing haunter. Sapphire's made all of those. And I think she's working on a couple others. I I gotta catch up with her and see what's going on. But anyway, before I forget, I do have another date for the next book club. So as you can see in chat, it's not going to come up on stream, of course, because reasons. We're going to be reading Firestarter by Stephen King, and we're going to be doing that in late July. I think, what did I say? The 22nd? Yeah, the 22nd. That is what I said. Um, hopefully, <laughs> Thomas will be less dead and he can read a book. Um, and hopefully, oh god, sorry. Sorry, I'm trying to multi-manage things. So, and I hopefully, I think, uh, who was it that told me? I think to Zodiac told me that they were at a wedding. So, which is obviously fine. So. So many emotes in chat. But anyway, basically, if y'all didn't get it from the overview, uh, this was a fantasy book. This is a bisexual fantasy is the way Piper uh, markets it, actually. So the main characters are both women love interests, um, and they're both beautiful. I love the way she describes them. So, um, also, I know you're in, like, Hawaii, um, but Becca, since you've read the book, if you want to hop in Discord and be on the stream, just let me know. Uh, I am totally up to do that, but I also know you're literally on an island right now. So if that is not feasible, don't fucking worry about it, dude. Oh, I just figured I would offer. So. Uh, where do I start here? Y'all want to start with... A potential Becca cameo, if she's up for it. Um, do y'all want to start with... I will let you know my mic is trash, we're waiting for... Yeah, no, like I said. If you can't or don't want to, that's super fine. Um, I just figured I would save you a lot of typing since you've read the book. Hi, Griffin, how are you? Griffin, were you able to read the book? I just... I don't want to ask people direct questions if they haven't read it. This book made me so happy. I had a lot of fun with it. I do have my criticisms, but I, I overall enjoyed it. So, let me ask y'all this. Do you want to start with my praises or my criticisms? Here, let's do, let's do like a quick two minute poll on where we want to start. What? First. There's like a two minute poll. Everyone should have read this book. In Leaf's defense, Leaf was moving three hours away. So I don't blame him at all for having not read the book. I have not read the book. Uh, Griffin, you might like it. It's fantasy. It's got magic and stuff in it. I like good things for last, so I would say criticisms first. I'm inclined to agree. I just don't mind leaving it up to you guys. Like... I want to talk about both of them regardless. 
And this is a pretty bare bones bullet list that I just came up with earlier while I was at work. So if y'all can think of other stuff, like, please say so. If y'all, like, when I, when I get to the relevant thing, like, if y'all have criticisms or praises that you'd like to include or rebut, rebuttal me with, yeah, that's fine. Go for it. I am comfy to just sit here and listen in. That's also so, super fine, hun. Like I said, it's definitely a weird stream, right? Because, like, to be super transparent, this stream only works if people read the book. It's just the way that this is. <laughs> um, so, like, I'm obviously not going to berate you if you haven't read it. That's stupid. Um, it's just helpful to know. Criticisms are spicy. I agree. I love this non-answer sentinel. Did you ever look up the plot at all, Sentinel, or are you just kind of going off of the overview that I posted? Because I know you mentioned looking up, like, a plot. Honestly, the weird thing with this is... There was some online shit that I'm not going to get into that happened. Um, Not anything, like, super bad or anything. I think it just got blown way out of proportion, so people tried to, like, review bomb the book, and that was a whole fucking thing. But I'm like, the book is fine. Shut up. I'm vibing off of what you say. Yeah, it's a newer book, so it's hard to find, like, just a synopsis. I tried to look up just, like, a character list so I could remember everyone and, like, literally can't find one. So, like, that sucks. Um, if no one read the book but you, I'd still be here to listen. I really, I actually do appreciate that. Um, the dialogue is just easier if people have. Yeah, no, Becca, that's pretty much exactly it. The book had a lot of drama because the author got big on TikTok. Somebody left a negative review on Goodreads. That got super blown up because I think uh, Piper did something. She apologized like fucking 11 times, but people have no concept of that, apparently. And I'm, I'm not defending her one way or the other. I really wasn't paying that much attention to it. I just couldn't get away from it for some reason. Uh, it was all over my TikTok. That's right. Thank you, Becca. I knew it had to do with the reviews, but I forgot it was her editor. Thank you for that clarification. Um, hopefully, Sentinel, when we read Firestarter next month, you'll be able to find a synopsis better. I'm sorry I had to move, dude. I promise that is not slander towards you. It's just helpful if I'm not the only one that's read it. I don't think Piper did anything. I want to say that at first she might have defended the editor or something, but again, like, if y'all really want to find the drama on that, that is easier to find than a synopsis. And I'm, I wish that was a bit, but it's not. See, Becca, as much as I love Stephen King, I've never read Firestarter. So, this is an opportunity to change that. Also, aren't they making like a movie or a show of Firestarter? Audiobooks are also a good alternative. But anyway, y'all voted for criticisms. Leaf, hurry up. I'm kidding. That's fine. Um, so yeah, we'll start with criticisms. So, a big, like, a very common thing to do in fantasy, just to be really blanketed, is to use a character's physical description as an alternative to calling them by their name. So, like, Amaris, for example, is one of the main characters. She's the Fae Touched one that I read in the over in the um overview words um and the whole description of amaris is that she is a borderline porcelain skin colored girl with white hair and violet eyes it's a very distinct description so one of the things that uh piper calls her is like sometimes it's the ivory girl did this and like i don't have an issue with that necessarily my criticism of it, which has very little to do with Piper, and my criticism of the usage of that sort of language in general, it tends to be overused a lot. And I'm guilty of this sometimes too, so like, I am not above that at all. There's a reason we have editors. But there's a lot of times where like, I've read The Ivory Girl like 70 times, or like Knox gets called Raven for like the hundredth time. And I'm exaggerating a little. It didn't ruin the, like, not, to be clear, 
none of these criticisms ruined the reading experience at all. It's just kind of something I picked up on. Um, because it's hard to miss, right? She does it a lot. So it's like, this is a cool description, but it would be cooler if you did it about half of the time. You know what I mean? I'm back. Hello, welcome back. So like, it's not a criticism that it was used. It's just the repetition of it that kind of got me. It's like, there is nothing wrong with just saying the character's name. Like, no one will begrudge you for saying a character's name 200 times because it's the character's name. So. <laughs> Gone time to party. Oh, it panned? Oh, uh, okay. The trailer for that for the Firestarter movie looks so good. I feel like she just picked opposites. Yes. Okay. I didn't write this down, but that's a very good point. Oh, how do I phrase this in a way that conveys what I want to say without actually saying other things? I, one of my favorite things about this book is that we get some fun representation. We get LGBT, we get Nox, who I think is a lovely character. It is, the descriptive language causes a couple of problems. Yeah, see, if you've read the book, it's like, I don't have to explain it. I'm I'm just trying to simplify my feelings on it. So the descriptive language, beca so because Amaris basically gets referred to as Ivory a lot, Nox gets called Dark a lot. Uh, thank you for the lurk, Griffin. L lurking and listening sounds perfect. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that I hope you have a wonderful evening, and I hope you enjoy the chat. Um, thank you, Griffin. Uh, Becca, if you and Griffin haven't met, I've known Griffin since middle school. So there's that tidbit for you. Let me know if you want to hop in a Discord to chat. Uh, once I get through some of my initial points, I might do that. Let me, let me get through this brain thought before I lose it. <sighs> no. The story, thank God, is not, like, super racially based or anything. Which, like, it shouldn't be because that's not the point of the story. Um, there are stories where that is the point, and that's fine, if done correctly. I'm not going to pretend like I know how to do that correctly. I am. I don't write those kinds of stories for a reason. Um, I think Becca put really well for the as it like a racial showmanship thing of like I don't think Piper necessarily thinks of it that way, but like out of all of the main characters. There are not as many... I don't know. Right. Like, and I think it has to do with that descriptive language of, like... If there wasn't so much emphasis on their appearance, I don't think it would feel that way as much. I'm trying to brightness up on this webcam just a touch. Like, I think a lot of it just has to do... Oh, it's not bad, Leaf. Really, it's not. Like, like I said, none of these things, like, destroyed my reading experience or, like, made me go, what the fuck, I hate this. Like, that did not happen at all. There's just a couple of points where it sticks out more than others. And unfortunately, if you're a pretty intelligent reader, it's kind of hard to miss. No, it's, yeah, no, for sure. Like, the author was very much trying to be... It has way more to do with just the way that she wrote the book in general than because she was trying to be type away. Oh, I know captions are still dead, but I, I literally don't know how to fix them. Speaking of, Becca, I may be picking your brain on that when you are not in fucking Hawaii, because I don't know how to fix this. Zombie, welcome in! Welcome to a book club! Hello, hello! Uh, but no, I think Becca puts it really well. Of, like, I think it's a great, like, attempt to be really progressive and inclusive. Yes, absolutely shout out, Becca. Becca is currently on a streaming break, but season two is coming soon. So make sure you follow her account and you get amped, because it's going to be so good. Hello, Balloony Balloons! I only call you that because of Becca, but it hasn't stopped me yet. Well, and what's interesting... Okay. Actually, I know a great way to explain why the coloring bothers... 
me just slightly on stream so the captions are through uh chrome so that's why it's that's why it's fucking me up lurking while i eat yeah no worries i'm good balloons how are you i'm doing pretty okay i'm honestly better now that i'm live um here's the all right so we are getting into spoiler territory just a heads up for anyone that cares so amaris is what they call fade touched she's got a couple she's got some like gifts so she has the gift of persuasion and her eyes can see through enchantments which is very cool nox who is very dark skinned is a succubus which means you run into the problem of the darker woman being sexualized <laughs> It is incredibly character appropriate in the sense of she is a succubus. But like, y'all can see how that starts to feel weird if you read into it, right? Like, I truly don't think that that's the intention. This, yeah. Like, I truly don't think that's the intention. I truly, I like, I truly think that it comes off a way that maybe was different than the idea. Um because as someone who's been following Piper for a long time, I would be shocked to find out that she was like secretly racist or something. So like, this is a delicate thing, right? Where things will not, this is a thing you run into as an author in general and something that I'm trying to be good about as I write. You never know how your stuff is going to be perceived. So like, I love Knox. I'm, I love her character, I really, really do. I don't think she quite realized how some of that was going to read to people who don't already have this entire universe in their head. So that's a big thing with writing. I'll catch up on chat in a second. I need to finish this thought or else I'm gonna leave, lose it. The problem with writing, really forever, is this story lives in your brain. This character, lives in her brain what that means is the character is very clear to her which means it is difficult to explain to other people so great example of this i'm working with some writing coaches right now on my book the main character lives rent free in my head all the time like she's a pretty vocal character for people who write y'all know what i mean I have had to explain the way that she is to these, um, and this is not a shot at the writing coaches, but I've had to go back and explain her to them multiple times. Cause they're like, oh, she feels really underdeveloped. And I'm like, she's not. It's just, she feels like such a whole person in my mind. I forget that she's not a whole person to everyone else. And I get the feeling that is kind of what has happened with this too because it's her first book because she was so enthusiastic about it because piper wrote it pretty quickly and that is not a knock that is a fucking accomplishment like please don't take any of this as like me bashing the writer because i'm not i love her to bits i think she's a lovely lovely human and i really loved her book it was just something i picked up on and it's it's so fucking hard to catch everything as an author all right let me flip back a little Fate touch title in 14. Mean balloons are tight. Ayo. Besties for life. I would be interested to see what happened if the script was flipped. Becca. I agree. Um. Oh, Leaf talking about his weekend plans. Oh my god. Piper's very progressive when I'm being so... I I wonder if some stuff, like... Like I said, I truthfully think a lot of it had to do with, like, stuff does not read the way you write it, necessarily. Be careful flying back home, by the way, Becca. Freedom guns and beer. Yeah, see that? So this is a thing that you get... 
<laughs> Sounds like Nova Scotia. Uh, no, Leaf and I live in the same state. It's, it's interest. it's one of the really interesting things about writers being so online nowadays is you get to see so much about who they are as a person. And it's both cool and sometimes a double-edged sword for the writer, I think. I'm, I'm super excited for her, though. I, her book has done really well. She's got plans for the other ones to release. Like, I'm, I'm excited for her overall. But yeah. So that was a big first criticism. I did not mean to derail that hard. Whoopsie. Mm. The other thing that I just thought of, and this is a thing that, like, basically everyone does, all of the main characters are attractive. Except for, like, Millicent. But she's unattractive because she's a bad person. Um, book club! Yeah! No, completely. Because you have to be available. Your audience expects you to be more available. And that sounds terrifying. Like, I, don't get me wrong, I stream, I put myself out in the public. But, like, writing is such a hard process and it can be incredibly personal. Like, you're going to get a lot of feedback from people who don't know what they're talking about, and you have to then parse out the advice worth taking from the advice not worth taking. Yeah, like, it's... Well, it's, like, the whole thing with people, like, review bombing is, like... That's not indicative of how good or bad the book is. That's people doing something else because of something that happened online. And, like, whether they're right or wrong can be debated but uh let's see here but no like i i just really like books that like don't tie and not to say that she does this specifically but just in general i'm a big fan of whether or not you're a good or a bad character has nothing to do with how pretty you are <laughs> Like, your main character is typically conventionally attractive and, like, whatever, right? But, like, the villain doesn't have to look bad, right? You know? Um, thankfully, this is really not that bad in this book. Um, there's a queen... What is the queen's name? Oh, fuck. I don't remember her name. The queen is very beautiful, and the queen is an asshole. So, like... Yeah, like, no, my looking characters is fine. You get a little bit of that in the Reavers, I think. Uh, with, um, um, oh no, what's his name? This is why I wanted a character list, Audrin. Audrin is an excellent character, and he's not, like, particularly pretty. So, like, you definitely get some of that in this book, which is a praise. The only reason that I bring it up as a quote-unquote criticism is because your two main characters are literally unearthly beautiful. <laughs> But, like, y because she needs that for the story to work, it doesn't bother me a ton. Um, an error that I did, uh, just as a quick whatever, because this got published quickly, I say in quotes because nothing in publishing is fast, there were some, like, spelling and grammatical, not so much spelling, but there were some, like, grammatical errors that got missed. It didn't ruin the reading experience. It just was probably more grammatical errors that would have, probably would have been caught um, upon a second edit or something. But, it, like I said, it didn't stop me. Just worth mentioning for anyone. If that, like, if that's going to ruin it for you, there you go. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is one. He's apparently putting out an expanded first edition. Yeah. So I was talking about that a little bit earlier, I think. Did I? I hope so. I Yeah, she did say she was going to give it another edit. She was going to expand the first edition and, like, re-release it. So I'm hoping that fixes a lot of those. And that's why I don't feel bad calling it out. Because, like, she knows and is working on it. So... There's that. Um, I honestly might buy the expanded edition just to see what's different from this one. Because I had fun with this one, but if the expanded give edition gives us more content, like, give me that shit. You know? Okay. So here's the real thing. I ship Nox and Amaris. I enjoy them together. I like them. The development of romantic feelings was a bit weird. So, for those that don't know, 
in the beginning of the book, Nox and Amaris meet and grow up together in an orphanage. Nox is like two or three years older than Amaris, so she's kind of a protector, which is great. They kind of get separated, and shortly before that happens, Nox internally confesses that she has romantic inclinations towards Amaris, and kind of confesses, but not really. She says, I love you, but there's no indication of whether Amaris takes that as romantic or platonic love. And obviously, you know, she's still pretty young, so I didn't really expect that. So we have that establishment. And then we have a span of time where you kind of learn about how the two different women grow up. So Nox ends up going to this brothel in place of Amaris. She finds out she's a succubus, she develops her powers, and she kind of becomes powerful in her own right. Amaris ends up going with an assassin who you find out is actually a reaver. Uh, think witchers, similar concept, which I will get into in a minute. Um, so she like becomes a warrior effectively. So they kind of don't talk about each other for a while, which is fine. But then Amaris kind of goes from, I miss my best friend to I have romantic feelings for this person I have not seen in two to three years. And while I love the like kind of slow burn, I want to get back to you, I, I do love that for sure. The, the jump from the platonic to the romantic was a little strange. But it's worth mentioning Amaris is also only 18. So like because, yeah, she's 18 and Nox is 21. So 18, yeah, three years apart. I can do math. So, like I said, I still like them together. Sorry, if I'm fixing my shorts. Um, I still like them together. It's just that was a bit strange. It makes sense that Nox was, like, in love with Amaris and just stayed in love with Amaris because she was her motivation to do a lot of the stuff that she does. Um... But, like, I was kind of expecting Amaris to have, like, I don't know. I was expecting it to be a little bit more unrequited, unrequited or something. I'm totally down with it not being because, like I said, I like them together, at least so far. So. Uh, oh, there's just stream elements. Okay. I don't need to pay attention to them. Uh, another just very nitpicky thing. It's third-person point of view and you do jump perspectives. And some of the spots where the perspective switched kind of threw me, but it was very easy to get back on track, so. The love felt very easy and I wanted drama. I completely understand that. Um. Yeah, no, I get it. I, I didn't necessarily need, like, drama. I just wanted it to be a little bit more earned. Like, I wanted it to be, oh, Amara still has dreams about Nox. Oh, she hasn't forgotten about her. Oh, suddenly she's older and a little bit more emotionally aware. And now she realized that she was in love with Nox. Like, I don't know. Even just that thought process, I think, would have made a better transition. But that's my opinion. Um, hello, I'm Bartosh and I'm pansexual. Well, welcome in and happy pride. Hello, hello. We are chatting about books. Specifically... The one with the title above me. Give me that Adora Catch drama. Oh my fucking. Becca, have you. Are you also obsessed with the Shiga reboot? Because. Ooh, lad. I fucking love that show. Oh my god. Fucking love that show. Um. But yeah, no. Like. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to, like. There's a lot of things in front of me. Happy Pride! Um, okay, so there's a scene towards the end where Nox and Amaris finally reunite. It's cool, it's great, it's very cute. Amaris is effectively in a prison cell, and Nox is able to kind of un- like, cut the rope surrounding her hands, which, like, great, cool. There is somehow enough room between these prison bars for them to kiss, and while I am fine with it, there was a moment of just, like, who the fuck makes iron bars that are that far apart? <laughs> Again, it's very nitpicky, and it's really not that big of a deal. It just made me chuckle, and I thought it would make y'all laugh. So, it's not... Like I said. 
Um, it was a pretty solid reunion scene that just kind of got me. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> She's not supposed to be able to reach anything. Why can she do that? <laughs> um, I do... I'm always kind of fascinated by characters who stake so much of their motivation on another person. And I think Nox does that in a very interesting way. Um, I gotta go. I hope the stream goes amazing. Okay, balloons, thank you for dropping by. Everyone say bye to balloons. But no, like, I... I love... Like, just seeing how different characters do different stuff. Sorry, my phone just dinged. I was making sure I didn't need to check it right this minute. Um, so, like, it's, it's just very interesting. Because, like... So typically, as like a well-adjusted person, you don't like base your life choices explicitly on another person all the time. Like obviously, if you're married, you make decisions together, and like that's a whole thing. But obviously, that's not what was happening. Um. So it's just truly like fascinating. Also, Leaf, I see you in the waiting room. Um. Let me grab you real quick. So I will be ranting a lot, but you're used to that. I'm just vibing. I know. <clears throat> Hello. Can you hear me, Leaf? There you are. Okay. I was like, if somebody's mic fucked, everything was fine. No, no, no. No, no, no. Um, but no. I, said, I don't know if you heard the last thing I said, but just the, the prison bars was really funny. I don't know why. I just, you know, I think that was probably an author fantasy, to be completely honest with you. <laughs> it probably was, and I wasn't that mad at it. I just, the realism in my brain <laughs> kicked in for half a second. I was like, this feels... Just, Wait a second. What? It was just How kind of a moment of like this? it was just thinking emoji. <laughs> like <laughs> Excuse me, aren't you supposed to be, oh, I don't know, in prison? Right, like I don't think it works this way. But for the sake of the cuteness of the scene, sure. <laughs> and <laughs> it was not that it was in no way like scene ruining. It was just kinda like you know, I reaching through the bars to like undo her like wrist being bound sure that makes total sense how do your faces fit yeah. how do you you know how do you fit enough of your arm through that you can hold each other through the bars <laughs> that that just that that sounds like poor prison design <laughs> a little bit to be fair it isn't a prison attached to an arena so it's not like anyone's meant to be there long term Okay, well then, that that kind of negates a little bit. Yeah, Amaros immediately gets sent to into an arena to fight a big fucking unkillable dragon thing. Ooh, we love to see it. We do. If you get a chance to read this when you're not dying from moving, I do think you'd have fun with it. Oh yeah, probably. Uh, okay, next bullet point before we totally derail, because we will. Um, so nah, there's... us never. Right? So there's a group in the book called the Reavers, and basically they live kind of out of society a little bit. Um, their home is literally like made of the rock of a side of a mountain, like somebody magicked it there, which is very cool. Okay. Um, okay. They live a bit of Alamigo vibes here. Kind of, but less, more magic made and less man made. Gotcha. Um, I, I was thinking like little Alamigo and all that, you know, like literally in a fucking cave. Right, so when I... Sorry, words. They explain it as someone way, way back in the day who was really proficient with, like, rock and earth magic, like, literally made this for them out of the side of the mountain. So they're, like, attached to the mountain. Mm. So, like, the stone table that they all sit around is perma-connected to the floor because it's just all mountain. Intriguing. Yeah, no, it's a cool concept. Um, they kind of exist near-ish the border between the northern country and the southern country, and I wish I could remember the names of either of them, but whatever. I didn't have as much time to make this list today as I would have liked. Anyway. Um. Gosh, so unprepared. I know, right? 
Um, so I can't believe this. But, like, the whole point is that they are supposed to kind of do what's... Not do what's best for the realm, but they're, like, protectors, right? Like, they don't serve a particular king or queen or anything like that. Okay. Here's my thing. Tell me that's not just the witchers. I, I can't. Right. And, like, again, I love the witchers. I'm very down with this theme. It is worth noting that almost every time certain things happened, all I could think of was the witchers. Let me do you one better. The one who went to live with the Reavers and became a warrior is white-haired Amaris. Remind oh you of Siri? Goodness. Remind you of Siri? <laughs> I mean, also a little bit of girl. Cause I mean, <laughs> right? <laughs> But, like, it's literally, like, this tiny girl, nobody thinks she can do it, and then she proves herself. It's just Cirilla. Um, which is fun, but, like, arguably a criticism, if all I can think of is The Witcher when I'm reading it. <laughs> Geralt, yeah, me too, Griffin. Oh my god, I love Geralt very much. <laughs> just Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill as Anyways. Geralt specifically Who? Uh, does something for me for sure. <laughs> but no. Definitely watch that Hot Tub scene more than once. But I guess my my point with this here is I would be interested to know if this was a coincidence or if she referenced the Witchers, and maybe just that's why I'm seeing parallels. If they were just source material. Mm, it could be source material, to be completely honest with you. Oh, absolutely. Also, just keep in mind that we as writers just sometimes go in and just go, mm, I think this sounds neat, and then unconsciously, oh yeah, it's just something that's from somewhere else. Well, that's what I mean. We've just is accidentally stolen. Well, that's kind of what I mean by coincidental. Is like I'm not accusing her of plagiarism or anything. I'm not that mean. But like, yeah. I wonder if there was some sort of influence, whether conscious or unconscious, from the Witcher franchise. <laughs> Could have been. Well, because, like, they live in a cold area away from society. There's harsh mm. trading regimens. They're all men. <laughs> I see some similarities. Right. And it's like, honestly, you could make the argument that a group like that is just going to have similarities. And you're not wrong. Mm. True. Like, you just, you would be correct. And, like, part of her proving herself was, like, a big character thing. and what. So, like, I love the Reavers. I think they're fantastic. They just really remind me of, like, the Witchers. Particularly, um... What's the name of the Witcher home base? Help. Yeah, huh, Chief? I don't remember, and that's gonna bother me. Anyway. Just like the way that they describe the way of life at like the Witcher home base reminds me of the Reaver way of life is all I was getting at. Gotcha. But I went into that sentence really confidently and then I realized I didn't remember the name of the, the home base for Witchers. And... Griffin's got you in chat. Kaer Morin, thank you, God bless. I knew it was something like that, but because it's not like English words, it like doesn't really stick in my brain. Yeah, that's the main base. No, you're right. So, uh, it, no. It was just one of those things where you're reading and you're just kind of going, Witcher, Witcher, Witcher. <laughs> Which is, mm -hmm. and as someone who loves the Witcher, I really wasn't that mad at it. I'm just, I'm just always curious if, um, that was intentional or if I just picked up on that because I happen to like both of them. Got you, bestie. Thank you, Griffin. Okay, no less those. Yeah, that's, it could also be both. So, unless Becca comes in with other criticisms, I think that's most of my list. Oh, the other, the only other thing I was going to say is there are a few things that I think will get rephrased in the expanded edition because the sentences were just like the teensiest bit confusing. Um, uh... It really wasn't that bad. It was like two or three things that I was just kind of like, wait a minute, what's going on? So I like went back a couple sentences and figured it out. I'm sorry, could could I read that just one more time real quick? Right. And, like, I got the gist of it and moved on, but, like, it is 
it is arguably something that could take someone out of the story if they're not like into it already so i do like well i guess we'll move on to good things of course the obligatory we love the lgbt rep there is both mm -hmm. um same sex and opposite sex encounters which we love to see um, I say that very enthusiastically, but, like, y'all know at this point that I'm happy about that. I feel like I don't need to harp on that. <laughs> um, the kind of positive thing to my earlier criticism of using physical descriptions a lot, the characters are well described and pretty well detailed. Okay. Like, obviously the main characters are more fleshed out than some of the more antagonistic are the side characters, right? Like, obviously. Yeah, fair enough. But, like, I can picture Amaris very easily. I can picture Nox very easily. They're very distinct, don't get me wrong. There's a character named Emily who gets described as having a lot of ginger hair and a lot of freckles, and I see her very easily in my mind's eye. Okay. So, I, I'm a big fan of, like, your characters are recognizable. Um, there's a couple of Reavers that are a little bit more vague, but they're also, like, not in the story that much. So, like, I don't necessarily... So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's okay if we don't remember them fully. Well, it's like, I don't necessarily blame her for not putting a ton of detail into a character that speaks, like, once. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, definitely. Just give a general character description and move on. Right, it's like, the Reavers are really important as an organization, but out of all of the Reavers, only like, one, two, three, four, like, five of them are important. So they all have, like, more memorable names and stuff. Like, Audrin is really important, Semiel is very important, uh, Malik is very important, and Ash is really important. And notice I can remember all of their names, because they're all important and well-described. Yes. Uh, I'm missing one name. But he's all, he's in the book very briefly. Uh, Bell something? I don't know. His story is fucking sad. Um, Oof. Tragic backstory time. So, he's not even a big character. His story's just depressing. So, because of the fey and human lineages kind of mixing, there are people who are fey touched like Amaris, who are part fey, part human. And then there's people like this child whose name I truly don't remember. Uh... Can I find it? You'll see. Probably not fast enough to be worth it, unfortunately. Um... But this kid is born pretty much human to human parents, but some humans do develop, like, small magics. Um, okay. Just in varying capacities. So this kid has to, has to do with, like, what is it? He can, like, speak and kind of conjure or control fire, which is very cool. Not, not like a firebender, necessarily, but it has to do with specifically him speaking. Um, and his village like didn't take it super well and his parents kind of I guess in an effort to I don't know I think his parents it, it's framed as his parents probably wanted the best for him but they like did it poorly the long story short Ooh. of it is people were scared of this kid's gift so they cut out his tongue so he can't speak and he can't use his magic holy shit that's fucked yeah dude yeah um, he got removed from that village and brought to Stone and brought to the Reavers after that. Um, so for a while, so for a while, Amaris is like, why won't this kid talk to me? And the answer is that he fucking can't. Just, yeah, hi, uh, we can't do the thing, you know, just, just a tad. Right, and obviously once she figures that out, she just hands him a notepad and they're cool, but like... She would talk to him and he wouldn't respond because she didn't know that he couldn't. God damn, that is... <laughs> There's some... I'm happy to get into it. There are some, like, pretty... I'm getting, like, some Poppy War level dark in this story. There's a lot of moments that kind of 
happen with varying levels of like oh shit <laughs> hey, uh, Gr Griffin, Griffin heard got his tongue cut out and came back <laughs> Um, I mean, to be fair, that, that is pretty memorable to come out of Lurk for. You're right! Um, so, kind of going off of that, the world is interesting and feels pretty foundationally solid. It at least feels like the author, Piper, has this world very firmly in her mind. <laughs> I wish I could relate. Well, because there's government systems, there's a northern and a southern kingdom. There's a church system. So, like, as y'all heard in the overview, the church, like, regulates some stuff. So, like, there are kind of bishops around, and you meet some of those. There's the there's the goddess, and, like, that's a whole thing. So, like, there's a religion. There's different demons and monsters and things. There's definitely a softer magic system, but a magic system nonetheless. So, well, there's me going, hey, I'm just going to create a whole entire language for mine. Why not? Yeah, you have fun with it that is. one, Chief. I'm going to be real. <laughs> We're choosing to not do that in my story because I don't hate myself. <laughs> Meanwhile, I do, so it's fine. Yeah. I like the idea of having a language. I just know at this point I'm not like up to dedicate the time Ooh. to do it. Hello, yes. Sentinel. Uh, what did I return to? Uh, we're moving on to good things in the story, and then I'll probably wait, talk- Wait, 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 wait. You, you, you need to tell Sentinel the fucked up thing. Oh my god, do you want to tell Sentinel the fucked up thing? Alright, Sentinel. You ready for this? Ooh, loose. Yep. Okay, well- You can, you can probably just go. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll just go. Um, so apparently there's this guy- A kid, uh, to be a, super a clear. He's a not very old. Fair enough, Sentinel. You're never ready, but I'll bring it on her anyways. Um, so there's a kid, and apparently he had like this magic ability, even though he was human, that specifically made him create fire when he was speaking? Or something like that. It's a little vague. So his family and his village cut out his tongue because they were scared. To be clear, he no longer lives in that village. He now lives with people who love him very much and actually care about him. <laughs> So, this this kid, I wish the fuck I could remember his name. This kid actually handles it really well. He's like, look, I'm not saying I'm happy about everything that happened, but everything that happened led me here, and I love being here. Seems like a rational response. Okay, Sentinel. <laughs> Damn. We know where Sentinel falls if we end up, ever end up in a, in a fantasy yeah, world. Yeah, apparently. So, yes, Sentinel, I think the idea was like, his parents still, like... His parents didn't necessarily consider him an abomination. I think they were just scared of his magic specifically. Um, I'm gonna be real. That story was more told so that you knew stuff about that character, not so much because you needed to know every detail. So, but yeah. This is very much a world where him being killed for that is very... Re like is definitely a thing that would have happened. Sentinel, <laughs> do you see this I'll Autobot shit leaf? I'll allow it. <laughs> oh my god. I got you, um, not that that bothers me, but just a gentle reminder that your chat is on screen the whole time tonight. <laughs> um, that's not to say you can't say that. I'm just throw it out there um Any thanks Lee. yeah uh i'm also in general such a big fan of like fey and magic and supernatural fantasy stories so like if you hand me a magic world chances are i'm in for the ride <laughs> i like that i got him again because he made it plural no it's i don't know also that and i probably because he just went on ahead and said in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Sentinel. Oh my god. Oh shit, that's funny. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, gosh, true. But like, I grew up reading Aragon and Harry Potter. Mood. Like, I'm, I'm... A fan of the fantasy genre, one might say. Uh, I've actually leaned on Aragon a little bit to write my story, to be honest. Uh -huh. 
Not in like, there's no like dragons, but in just like the way that that story kind of unfolds. Well, I know that there's no dragons in your story. Yeah, but all of chat doesn't know that. Well, you just said that, so. Right, but they didn't know Probably that before. Hi, Manny, how are you? Thank you for the lurk and welcome in. Good to see you. I got bit for Sapphire. Or Se uh, Sephira, excuse me. Um, I'm gonna be real with you, Sentinel. Aragon was only good if you didn't watch the movie. <laughs> the movie, ru like, tried really hard to ruin it. But the... Okay. <laughs> As the movie itself, I think it did fine. No. Trying to go from the book, it was a piece of shit. I think the movie would have been fine if they placed it in a similar world and didn't call it Aragon, but I also still don't think it would have been that good of a movie. <laughs> It would have been very mid. To be completely honest with you, I actually liked it as a kid. Uh, I didn't, but also please consider that I was a huge fan of the books, so therefore my criticism was ruthless. I also had taken, like, years between actually reading the book and seeing the movie, so I think yeah. that's also because, you know, I didn't have it as fresh in my mind that I didn't see a lot of the... Blah. That probably that happened helps from a lot, that. actually. Yeah. Can I and say so I was say... actually able to enjoy the movie without constantly thinking about how far it was from the book. Right now, the Percy Jackson movie. The whole entire time, I'm going. Annabeth isn't a blonde. Fuck you. See that that was interesting for me because I was kind of that way where I was mentally further away from the book, so it didn't bother me as much. I just I had a lot of problems with the Percy Jackson, especially when they went to Nashville. They never went to Nashville in the book, and I'm like, why? Oh shit, why? you're right. Why? Why are you going to a place that they never went to? What I'm gonna be fuck? real with you, Chief. They, I wish they had made Annabeth blonde, but also it like was not the most impart, important part of her character at all. So you like, know, I know, but also I was just I, at that point I had gotten so burned by movies and books. I was just like. Mm. Yeah. Now, now you're just fucking around with the character description willy-nilly? Okay, I see you, Hollywood. Like, I... I'm a big fan of... It's very easy to put a wig on them, and that's fine. So, like, right. you might as well do that. But also, unless the appearance is really important to the character development, which is not super with the case... the case is not. Well, actually... Not, not she... for her hair. Mm, but it does, though. Because no. she's sick and tired of being thought of being dumb just because she's blonde. That was just because she was a girl in general. That wasn't super specific to her no, being blonde. Well, it was specifically her hair color. She brings it up quite a bit in the books. I don't think she brings it up as much as you think. But I also Probably haven't read not, but it's something while. that I did... That, well, as someone who is blonde, it's something that I resonated with. So I was just like, mm, For yes. sure. So I guess my point to that is... As long as they maintain that she is tired of being called dumb and underestimated, I am less mad about it being centered on her hair. True. However, in the book, she did specifically say it was because of her hair color. But we're talking about the wrong book now, so let's get back on track. Hey, you're the one that derailed us. Um, I, well, now I'm putting us back on track. It's fine. The only other thing I was going to yeah, say, the show actually look like, looks like it's going to be good and I'm excited. What we'll find out. Um, it helps. The the author being in on the show makes me feel better. True. And then Rick Rudin just being like, mm, yeah, no, I don't give two fucks about your racist opinions on what this actress looks like because she also is that. actually the embodiment of the character. So fuck you and your homies. No, so I like, the yes, fact that Uncle Rick. the fact that he is involved in casting for that show makes me go like, OK, I'll watch this. Um, and anyway, uh, Sentinel, if you're ever up to read Percy Jackson, they're really easy reads. They will not take you long. Um, also helps if you're a big mythology nerd. But that's the last yeah. we're going to see. One of my big praises for the book, honestly, is the parallel but diverging paths by which the two main characters grow and develop. So Intriguing. I'm... Please say more. So did you catch earlier when I gave the short version of what happens to them? Or were you AFK for that? I might have been AFK for that part. I'll too. say it again. I just needed to know. Um, so what happens is they're at this orphanage that is kind of a child mill. Like people can purchase children and it's like fucked, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I heard this part. Yeah. Knox kind of protects Amaris. They get really mm -hmm. close. 
Amaris yeah. gets scouted by this woman who owns a brothel and wants to purchase her. So she... Which is yeah, it's fucked, anyway. It's super fucked, but... Un like, unfortunately, this is not even the most fucked thing that this woman does. Oh no, I... I you know, <laughs> this doesn't surprise me one bit. This does not surprise me one... But, Hi, I've read the poppy word. Nothing surprises me anymore. Sure. But like, so As we, we, she places this deposit and is basically waiting for Amarius to come like of age. And of course, both of these girls are like, LOL, no, fuck this. Mm -hmm. um, so they develop a plan to escape, but it backfires, right? The, okay. the woman, the woman comes to pick her up earlier than planned. It's a whole thing. Amaris um, actually scars her own face so that she is not perfect anymore. And then ends up talking, oh. and then ends up talking a reaver. Uh, I just said his name, and it's already gone. Was I'm... it the Samael dude? Because no. I remember that one. No, 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 Audrin. Audrin. Audrin was there because if you work for or serve the church at all, you're supposed to serve reavers. So he had stayed overnight to like get some health poultices and recover. So mm -hmm. he's like getting ready to leave, and she convinces him to take her instead of going to this brothel because like obviously she doesn't want to do that and not blame um, her so he takes her away so at first he isn't really like he's just trying to get her somewhere else and then she can go wherever he wa she wants but it's very clear that she doesn't know where she wants to go she's like not well educated she's really never been outside of that orphanage etc so she mm -hmm. convinces him that she wants to become a reaver and she wants to go with him. So Intriguing. he kind of caves and takes her back to stone and then a little bit out of stone to the reaver fortress, basically. Um, Ultimate Reaver or something. I forget the exact name. I, I really should have written some of this down, but if I take notes while I'm reading, I'll never finish the book. Um... And over the span of, like, three-ish years, she becomes a full-fledged reaver and, like, takes her vow to, like, do that and all that. So she basically becomes, like, this warrior assassin woman, kind of. Assassin. We love to see it. No, I love that for her. It gives her a lot of freedom that she did not have in her childhood, and it ends up being really good for her in that way. She ends up with a chosen family, with, you know, the kind of, like, the whole brother thing. So it actually puts her in a pretty good spot outside of just, like, fate and plot reasons, obviously. <laughs> um, Nox. Escape attempt also gets botched. So here, here's the fun thing. Remember I told you Amaris had the gift of persuasion? Yes. She didn't know that until she met another fae who told her. <laughs> when they get separated trying to escape she accidentally uses it on Nox and says wait for me so Nox cannot leave because she has been spelled into staying needless to say Amar Amaris feels pretty bad about that when she realizes what she's done <laughs> point being she obviously does not escape the orphanage um, and she gets sent to the brothel instead of Amaris. Hmm. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So, for a little while, she ends up working behind the bar. Um, but then there's this guy who basically falls in love with her. Or his version of falls in love with her. She's not into him. Um, mm -hmm. And pays, okay. like, pays within an inch of his life to like be her first intimate partner which is super gross but it's a brothel <laughs> i don't like this but okay no it's okay <laughs> it gets weirder give me a minute she's kind of talking about how they're in the bedroom this is like starting to happen and nox fully dissociates like nox is fully not present and then the man is dead on top of her How fun. Turns out, she didn't know it. She's part succubus and fed on him without realizing and killed him. 
you know, pop off, queen. <laughs> I mean, he kind of deserved it, to be honest, but that doesn't... Yeah. It's still really fucking traumatizing, because he's like, not to get super gross about it, they were mid-act when he died. <laughs> So, uh, she, good. so she's like, there's so a not heavy... Only, not <laughs> only did she have to remove something, she also had to move another thing. Uh-huh! I'm glad you <laughs> I'm glad you picked up where I was going! <laughs> that is exactly how that goes. Um. Oh, poor baby. Yeah, literally. So then she spends time kind of working with uh, Millicent, who's the head of the brothel. Kind of working with her out of necessity. Because she wants to become strong enough to go get Amaris. And she, through her powers, basically, abilities, magic, whatever, she can kind of make people her puppets. So she's doing that so both that she can go after Amaris, and because in the in the long game, it will give Millicent power that she wants. So in exchange for, like, helping Nox learn how to control her abilities and clearing out the bodies when she fucks up, she gets the power that she wants in the long term. You know, me, you're fair enough, man. No, it's, it's, it's a mutually beneficial deal for a while until Nox figures out that Amaris is not being kept, held captive in the north, that she is in the southern country, and that she is moving about of her own free will. And then Nox kind of goes, LMAO, fuck this deal. As she should. I agree. Millicent's also kind of a bitch, dude. I mean, um, she has enough. good character reasons to be, but it doesn't fix it. <laughs> so it's like Yotsuyu, got it. Yeah, she's got a hand that su it, uh, sickens and kills anything she touches. Oh. And if that doesn't make you bitter, I don't know what does. interesting it's only one hand and it, it looks like it's got it's like visually different too it's like great it's got talons and stuff she, she worked she wears gloves a lot to cover it up huh. you find that out like 75 percent of the way through the book when emily who has fallen in love with Knox but is unrequited uh dies via the hand because millicent thinks that she's gonna be in the way and ruin her plans ah we love to see it yep it's okay she then almost kills Knox with the hand because Almost being that operative word. Uh, yeah, she f she fed a man to her as fodder so that she could recover and not die. Fair enough. It becomes more gross when you realize Nox was unable to speak or move, which means she basically sent a dude to come do things without Nox's consent. We don't like that. Yeah, I know. It's I mean, gross. good good that she rectified her mistake and that she let but also right but that's like low key a, a human sacrifice and b rape we don't that's, we don't so like that's this. like low key assault though we we don't like that not not in this household it's one of those things where Nox very much comes to terms with it because she's alive and it means she can continue to do what she wants to do right but like she's not the most pleased about it obviously you know, I wouldn't be either, to be completely honest with you. There's a couple of, like, very sexually charged scenes with her because she is part succubus or demon or whatever word you care to use. And most of them are consensual. There's only, like, two where I'm like, this is, this is uncomfy. <laughs> Just, I don't, I don't particularly care for this one. Yeah, exactly. Most of them are at least some level of consensual, whether it's for power reasons or money reasons or whatever. Mm. Or at least she initiates or something. She, she's involved in most of them. <laughs> um, But it's... I guess my, my whole thing is like... They're developing alongside each other in very different scenarios. So it's very cool to me. Because it's like... Y'all grew up in entirely different worlds. And found totally different kinds of strength. So... I think she handled writing both of their kind of upbringings without it getting too confusing, which was really nice. So, like, for the most part, she, like, kind of got point A to point B on one character and then did point A to point B on the other one rather than trying to, like, 
sidebar everything. Which is very much so appreciated. No, for sure. It would have been way more fucking confusing if she had done it a different way. So, there's there's a couple of really... <sighs> so, you ever read a book and you're like, oh, that's kind of fucked up, and then you go to talk about it and you're like, wait, that's actually really fucked up? <laughs> yes, hi, it's called The Poppy War. Yeah, we will read that eventually, by the way. I just really wanted to read Firestarter. Oh no, I don't blame you. I'm just saying that there are that there are things that you read in the Poppy War and you're just like, hmm, that's some spicy things, and then you realize that you're talking about it with other people and you're like, oh That is wait a minute. <laughs> I d I didn't realize it was that bad. Yeah. Uh God, there's like, so many not, not well, no, that that's kind of spoilers, so I won't. Um, yeah, because we probably there, will do it for book club. There, there's a whole entire sequence where it's just nothing but fucked. Oh, great! That's gonna be super great to talk about and avoid with Twitch TOS. Yeah. Uh. Um. Honestly, my other big thing about this book is some of the side characters are really good. Um, there's one point where you meet a few of the characters from the northern country, and what's fascinating, the reason you figure out that Amaras can see through enchantments, is she kind of stumbles across a couple of these guys, and they're like winged fae, but her companions see monsters. And of course she's like, what the fuck? Turns out, when people, particularly I think uh, soldiers or guardsmen or kingsmen probably, cross the border from the north into the south, they are basically glamoured to look like demons. So her How companions would... see literal demons. Meanwhile, she's like, they're obviously fey. What the, what the fuck is wrong with you? What? Hello? Just why are you being stupid? Right, and like, the answer is that they're not. She can just see things that they can't. But it's still like, oh, alrighty. Um, but there's, there's like four or five of them, and it's like Uriah and a couple others, but the one that is, plays the biggest part in book one is, uh, Gadriel, and he is their general, and he's very sarcastic, he's a little bit of an asshole, but he's very- uh, my type of man. Yeah, exactly, right? Um, but like, it's, it wasn't even that for me, it's just he- He's one of those characters where you watch him interact and he just feels like a full character. So it doesn't always it doesn't all happen at first because Piper is managing three or four of them plus Amaris and her companions, so she's managing like six to seven people in one scene. Which is just a lot. Yep. Um, but you get some one-on-one -on -one scenes with Gadriel, and actually in the arena the queen, who, oh my god, I hate this woman, um, basically says, like, prove your allegiance. She is... Huge spoiler. She's the reason that glamour thing exists on the border. Because mm, the, the queen's gift is illusion. Oh. Um, but she's like, hey, if you're not against our country, kill this demon, and shoves Gadriel in front of her. So, of course, Amaris is like, oh, LOL, no. fuck you. No? <laughs> um, so, because she refuses to do that, he can't fly out because his wings have been mutilated, just destroyed. So, he can't fly. Um, so, when she Maybe obviously when she obviously doesn't kill him because Amaris is really stubborn and is like, you're a bitch, no. She releases Good. this basically dragon with like almost a snake like neck and it's a very cool creature it's also fucking unkillable we do in fact love to see it um so that's a whole fucking thing <laughs> um they get out of that miraculously of course because there's more books to come we love plot armor yeah, I mean, I really thought Gadriel was gonna die. I'm still not convinced he's not dead because of the way the book ended. <laughs> um, but of course, Amaris is fine because plot armor. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Gadriel also went out of his way to make sure she would be fine, so, like, it's not just plot armor. Um, but the reason you figure out the Queen's gift is illusion is they finally get an audience with her to try to ask her to stop killing all of the, like, men that are crossing the northern border and try to figure out what's going on, because they serve... The Reavers serve the realm, not the country. So they're right. like, Ayo, why the fuck are you killing people? What is happening? Um, and you come up on two thrones, and you know this. she has this heir, right? She has a son. Okay. So it's just the queen in the throne room, and Amaris is like, your majesty, and she hears her companion say, your majesties, and she thinks they've just misspoken. And it looks like she's like talking to thin air, and it's a very weird performance. To which point she realizes the crown prince, the heir to the throne, is not real. Uh, oh. He's an illusion. He is not real. Uh oh. That's why she tries to make an example out of Amaris. That's why she tries to kill her. Because she is the only one who has figured that out, to our knowledge, of course. Or the presumably the only living person, right? Yeah. But that's that's what's going on. Is she tries to turn everyone against her, and then kill her, so that even if she does somehow survive, no one will believe her, because she's an enemy of the state or whatever the hell. Mm, okay. So the dude, the queen is not a nice lady. <laughs> you know understandable <laughs> Queen sometimes is not nice you just lady. have to give yourself a good delusion even if it is a son just like Wanda Java. I have a lot more sympathy for Wanda Maximoff than I do for this woman fair enough Wanda Maximoff at least wasn't like she didn't want to hurt other people this was fucking vindictive mm. um just a little sociopath. Uh, just a little sociopath. That is a treat. Yeah, right? Um, I think she's a fascinating character, and I kind of hope we get more of her in the second book, because I'm like 99% sure she lived. Because uh, what happens in the arena, basically, is the dragon self-heals. So what they do is the dragon is trying to get away, but it's chained by its leg. So they basically hack off the part of the leg that's connected by the chain to the chain, and then the dragon gets away from it fast enough that the leg doesn't reattach. And it frees the dragon. And Gadriel oh. and Amaris get out of the arena, riding the deadly unkillable dragon. Smart. Very smart. Also very dangerous, because how the fuck do you get down from that? <laughs> Boy. Um. So, some people got eaten, but the queen was not one of them, because that would have been way too easy. It would have been. So, I wish, though. She kind of deserved it. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm trying to think. There's so much. I'm trying to not just, like, tell y'all the entire plot of the book. Because <laughs> it, it would be really out of order at this point. But, no. Uh, do we have a release date for book two? I really don't remember. I think we did, but I think it got moved, maybe? Here, hold on. I can just go to Piper's website. Um, so the expanded edition of this book, I think is available in like, August, September. Mm -hmm. Um, book two is gonna be in February. And then book three is August, 2023. And book four is February of 2024. So there's release dates for everything, which is cool. Nice. Um, there so will be. Yeah, and that's she's... actually not an uncommon 
practice. Uh, it used to be a lot more common than it is now. Um, but like take Frankenstein, for example, there are two different editions. There's an 18, yeah, but that's because people and there's suck. 1830... Well, I'm... give me a second. <laughs> there's an 1818 edition and there's an 1836 edition. One was based off of Mary Shelley herself, and then the other one was her husband got his conniving little paws on it and decided that oh he can write it better. Told you it's because people suck. So basically, what happened with this book is it got written very quickly, which is great. But one of my critiques, which I mentioned to y'all earlier, is there's a couple of just things that either get phrased weird or there's grammatical stuff, stuff like that. So basically what she's doing is she's doing an expanded edition re-release. So it's another edit to hopefully fix a lot of those errors. It sounds like she might be adding a thing or two, though uh, don't quote me on that one because it's not my book. Um, but just to read from her website, uh, the revised Barnes & Noble exclusive of The Night and Its Moon will include Audrin's novella, A Gold Foil Moon, and Beautiful Stained Edges. There will also be professional editing, new chapters, and more character development. So it, it basically just helps fix some of the things that ideally happen before the book comes out at all, but did not. Because of basically just the way her publishing process went. Because she did not have a professional editor, and I think she more, she like, created her own publishing company to self-publish her book which is very cool and very fuck you to the system and i'm very down with it um but like this time she gets yeah but like this time it gets to be available in more places because <laughs> oh, no, God, sentinel please <laughs> I love how many times it's flagged this word. I love it. Um, but basically, it just gets to add some of the stuff. So remember how I said earlier that sometimes things do not read the way the writer thinks they do because the writer has more context than you do? Mm -hmm. I, I think this will probably fix some of that, as well as some of the basic... Hey, this is like this comma's in the wrong spot, or like, you know, that kind of shit. Yeah, because uh, honestly, when you are writing, even when you go back and reread your own writing, you're just like, mm, I didn't quite catch that, but yet someone else can be like, uh, right. my guy, you should have used the Oxford comma. And as Becca said earlier, way scrolled up, she did have an editor, but she was not a professional editor. Which means she also yeah. missed stuff. Which like, don't get me wrong, I don't think it ruined the experience at all, but if we can get those fixes mm -hmm. and more content, I will absolutely buy this book again for that. Like, that's extremely worth it to me, and I will be getting the Barnes & Noble one because I want the pretty one. <laughs> we want the pretty colors. Well, and I want the pretty one, apologize. and if I'm going to own both books, I want to be able to tell which one is which. Yeah, fair enough. Like, even if it wasn't for the fact that I think the new one's going to be prettier, I just want to know which one's my first edition and which one's my expanded edition. <laughs> Sentinel, we are very much so an Oxford comma household. Oh yeah, no, you will get no pushback from us on that. Like, do I always use it? Not necessarily. Do I like it and do I use it a lot? Yes. Um, I do catch myself not always using it, but I blame learning AP style in college for that because AP style oh is anti Oxford comma. I hate AP style. No, no, no. So there's AP as in like essay writing, and then there's AP style like journalism writing. Fun fact: those are not the same thing. Oh. Intrig bit? Intriguing. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, Sandal, exactly. Um, AP style is a different... AP style for journalism is stuff like how do you do street names and country names and, like, numbers and specific grammatical things because you journalism is pretty spe can be pretty specific in its language. Mm -hmm. So because I did that for four years, it kind of has just leaked its way into my everyday typing. So... You know, as it can... Yep, so like, don't Sometimes get me wrong. I find myself writing a lengthy thing and I'm like, wait a second, where's my citation? Yeah, right? 
Thank you, Dr. Ramsey. God, I love that woman, though. Um, so, like, don't get me wrong. I am a big fan of the Oxford comma and will use it a lot of the time. But I don't always, particularly because of just past things I've learned. Uh, would. Took one editing class in college and all it taught me is how easy it is to weave by... <sighs> Sentinel is a journalism major. Correct. <laughs> like, yes, actually. I was taught how to not do that. Because I had a really good journalism professor. But she did show us, like, how easy it is to do that accidentally. To be like, hey, this sentence has too much of your voice in it. And for me to be like, oh shit, you're right. Like, that, she called me on that a lot. Because I'm a creative writer and I had to learn how to write not creatively. I think one of my, like, best experiences was I was taking, um... I was taking a Victorian literature course with Dr. Floyd. Dude, that um, would have been so sick. Bruh, she is A, a fantastic human, and B, a fantastic English teacher, um, and also high Victorian literature. Uh, yeah. So God, it was. God bless was my lit time. professor, because I was um, not mentally checked into that class. <laughs> anyway. But, so what, what we did is we got to like one of our first papers, and it was on Bronte and the Tenant of Wildfell Hall, and she was like, seems very impersonal and i'm like uh, okay she's like where are your where's where's your basis where's your interpretation what what's going on here like you didn't have this problem when it was uh when when we were in just the regular lit course because i had her for um right the, the but you standard... were but you were writing it like a ramsey paper I was writing it like a Ramsey paper because it was a 300 level English course, not the regular hunky dory gen ed credit. Right. For context, everyone, Dr. Ramsey taught both me and Leaf how to write a research paper really well. And to be pretty unbiased. Yes. So, shout out to Dr. Ramsey. Love her. Um, is not. Yeah. Also, yes, Sentinel, it's super nauseating to read professional articles from big news sources where it's really obvious. Why do you think I'm so picky about where I get my news? Um. No. It is interesting, I will say, with how much language can affect the way something is read. So, like, obviously mm. I don't have, like, a specific way. I don't have, like, a specific, um. Oh, wait, no. Maybe I do have a specific example. Let me see. I don't have a specific example. Oh, wait, yes, I might. No, I think I opened it accidentally to a place that helps. So there's one point where they're trying to vote on whether or not Amaris will be allowed to stay and train as a reaver, right? And they're kind of okay. against it. Their blacksmith is, like, just a dash of sexist. Um, Ooh, we love misogyny. It's, it's only a little. And he is not that important of a character, so it's kind of fine. Okay, okay. Um, but, like, she can tell that they're kind of leaning towards no. And, like, she doesn't have anywhere else to go, right? Like, she is here because she is desperate and has nowhere else to go. So, this is before she learns that she has the gift of persuasion. For context in this part, she is 15. So it says, Her body moved before her mind understood what she was doing. She was on her feet, slamming a fist onto the table. It was a childish outburst, and the flimsy impact of her bald fist made little to no sound on the stone table. Still, the confidence command that surged out of her hit its mark. She looked the men in the eye without a drop of doubt. The tumultuous curl of her fury burst out in a single demand will let me stay, and you will let me train. Her lavender eyes sparkled with her eruption. Her fire burned into them for a moment until, in the quiet that followed, she realized what she had done. And she, at this point, she doesn't know that she's done persuasion. At this point, she just thinks she's made her look herself look like a child. And that she is for sure gonna get booted out because she just yelled at a room of full-grown men. <laughs> but it's interesting because then right after, you get She's, you know, she feels bad. She thinks she's going to get kick, kicked out. And then you get, the events that followed were bizarre. A hushing wave pressed down on the Reavers as their faces drifted from an amalgamation of confusion to something accepting and contemplative as the men murmured among themselves. They appeared to be quietly nodding to each other. 
The Fae, Samael, glittered with near wicked amusement. He lifted his head from where it had been resting, bored on his chin, and steepled his temp fingers together in a triangle. Quote, my. That was because he knew exactly what just happened. Right, and he literally says, my, isn't that a talent? Because the whole, so the whole thing with persuasion, it doesn't affect full-blooded Fae. Um, it only partially works on what I guess conventionally would be known as like halflings or like fey children, people that are half fey. And it's very effective on full humans. So her accidentally using persuasion is the only reason she became a reaver. Because she persuaded that entire room into voting yes. Intriguing. And Semiel also 100% lets her because he's the the like unofficial leader and could have shot that down because he knew what was going on i was about to say he also knew that she just persuaded the fuck out of those guys so i think he's he... like um <laughs> right but i think he kind of liked her anyway and then is like oh you have this gift it could be useful so then he's talking to her about it she doesn't even know she's part fey until this moment she knows truly nothing and he looks at her he goes that is a, a very interesting gift to have if you use it again within these walls on our people, you are gone. Okay. The both good and bad thing that happens with that is none of the other Reavers know that she can do it. Which means when she gets dispatched with Malik and Ash and she has to use it, she they have lived and dined and bled with her for three years and just find out that she's kept this massive secret from them. Ah, uh, we love trust issues. And she uses it on her human companion. Uh -oh. It is arguably for a good reason, but like, just imagine the fucking betrayal, right? Like, I can't believe you've done this. Yeah, and I think they literally just have this moment of like, we're not going to abandon you because you're one of us, but also you're a witch and a bastard and fuck you. <laughs> you Which, know, like, honestly, a whole mood. I don't really I blame, blame them. them. Well, here's the other thing. They went to attack um, Gadriel and a second one. I don't remember which one was there right now. And she, what it looks like to them is that she used this witch power that they didn't know she had to keep them from killing a demon. To side with a demon. Mm. So, like, eventually that gets more explained and they kind of... They're not okay with her having or using the power, but it, like, becomes more acceptable in that, like... She gets a chance to explain herself. They don't just swear her off for good, thankfully. But, like, that's a whole thing where she's like, Dude, I leave my fucking home for five seconds and suddenly everything's in fucking jeopardy. I hate this. <laughs> you know, it's just... You know, just some story development as a trait. It's fine. I mean, you're right. And it does end up being fine. But, of course... In that moment, she doesn't know that. I mean, she's not supposed to know that. She's the character. Correct. It's okay, they also don't know about Nox until they're in the cell next to her when they find each other and they make out through the bars. Because, <laughs> like, she does the also very Witcher thing of compartmentalizing the painful stuff in her life and not really talking about it. Ah, uh, burying your trauma. Correct. Which All means, the greats do it. Which means she never really know. told any of the Reavers about Nox. Oh. They know a bit about where she came from and, like, her home, like, what her situation was. But, like, none of them really know about Nox at all. So, Ash and Malik, I, I hope I'm saying his name right. Their first introduction to Nox is her crashing to her knees on the other side of Amaris's cell cutting her free and holding her and kissing her through bars. And they're just kind of looking at them like, what the fuck is going on? Just, um, excuse me. Why are you, why are you kissing this lady? 
Well, like, it's basically, why are you kissing our sister? Who are you? Yes. Not to mention, Nox walked in on the arm of one of her human puppets, who happens to be one of the captains of the Royal Guard. Hmm, we love to see it. Right, no, we absolutely do. That man is... Oh, my, you want to talk about some fucked up shit? Oh, mm. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> He's not a nice man, to put it really lightly. Um, Nox goes after him in another town to turn him into one of her puppets, and he convinces she convinces him to like take her home to bed or whatever. Which like normally at that point she just does her succubus thing, turns him into a puppet, and, like we're cool, right? But like something feels wrong, and she convinces herself it's because she's not in like the usual town she does this in. And then mm -hmm. he leads her into a torture chamber. Uh oh. And like the way that she put it really well, actually, is the reason everything felt so awkward was because they were two predators assuming the other person was prey. Oh. Which is just such a fucked, but such an accurate way to put it. Um, but don't, this man gets his just desserts so hard. Um, we do, in fact, love to see it. Right. Like, he pulls down a whip, as so, like, he means to whip her, which she does not like, because she has, like, CPTSD about that. Um, mm -hmm. So she acts like she's into this. She, like, even says the phrase, like, ooh, I love a good sadist, because good acting, I guess. Um, and she basically says, why don't you come warm me up first? And he, because his ego is giant, falls for it. So he obviously gets most of the life sucked out of him. It is! You're right! Thank you, babe. Your one-word contribution to the stream. You are absolutely correct. Uh, you know, and we, we're here for it. Or she at also, least I am. She also then goes, let's play a little game. I'm going to point to something in here. And you get punished every time you you've used this on a woman so and like we don't go through that whole sequence because the implication is that the room is filled with stuff right so we don't go through that whole sequence because that would take for fucking ever and there's other plot things going on um but at the end she's like okay i'm gonna take over you now and just slowly castrate you because you're a garbage person slowly Cast straight. Okay. Um, she wraps a piece of leather around his testicles. And just has him walk around like that. And he dies before they can okay. fall off because he dies being dragon fodder while he, she's trying to save Amaris. But like... <laughs> be like that. All right then. Uh, Nox has a lot of hatred for the world and men. <laughs> you know. And if anyone, if, honey. if any man in this book deserves it, it's that one. <laughs> Yo, right now, same. I, you I, fucking I, I right, too babe. Am pretty done with men. Yeah, right. Yeah. Look like tiny rubber donuts. Yeah, I've never seen one in person, Sentinel, but I more or less know what they are. I used to live on a cattle farm, so I have a pretty decent idea. Like, I haven't done it, I haven't seen one, and I also don't think we do it that way where I used to live. Um, I think the way that happened, I think they do it a bit more surgically. Um, but no, I have a general idea. But no, so that happens if you want to talk about some fucked up shit. That's a thing. A lot, I'm gonna be real, a lot of the fucked up shit happens to Nox because she's in a brothel. I mean, you know, it, that uh, kind of understandable. Yeah. Uh, if you do it via bands, Sentinel, yes. Yes. That's what I mean by slow castration. Because she's, Nox basically does that, but with leather instead of a band. Because, you know, cut off blood flow. Yep. She cuts off... There was, like, a multi, like, threaded whip in his fucking torture chamber, and she cuts off one of those leather strips and does it that way. 
again though, not an ounce of me feels sorry for this man. Oh, me either. It's just, damn. Yeah, no, it's pretty savage. <laughs> it's pretty good. Oh, uh, like it's terrible, obviously, but the, the vindication is very felt. Um. So that's, yeah, that, that's a whole fucking thing that happens. Amara, it's, it's interesting because both characters go through a lot. It's just a different flavor of a lot. So. Also, just the concept of an orphanage being a child mill is like, holy shit. What? No. I hate this. Sounds a little Enderal to me. Uh, from what I know of Enderal, I kind of. In this stream. Jess is on vacation right now. So. Oh yeah, getting almost drunk enough that she can barely stand. <laughs> she did tell me about that, yes. <laughs> uh she I love getting the text of just my boyfriend had to help me walk. It was just Jess! <laughs> oh I got the Snapchat of I'm very drunk right now and I'm like I, I get I get it and I, I open it like a couple hours later because I didn't realize I got the notification. Yeah. And I'm just like, Nam or how lost in the sauce are you? She was like, not right now, because I have something to eat. But earlier, I couldn't walk without help. I'm like, yeah. So you're having a great time. She is. I really do actually think she is, which is good, because she deserves it. She does. All right. So let me spin this on you real quick. Do you oh. have... I, I was just going to ask, because I don't 100% know where to go without just continuing to vomit information about the book. Do you have specific questions or topics you want to get into? Well, I mean, you know me. I enjoy some good geopolitics. So, I mean, if you want to talk about the kingdoms, go for uh, it. I only know a little, to be honest, but I will tell you what I remember. It's a very character-driven story, so it's not like that's not important. It's just not as much the focus. Mm. Um, where do I go? So, a lot. So the Fae actually used to be a lot more prominent and around, particularly be before the borders between the northern and the southern kingdoms were drawn. Mm -hmm. Um, and then their this becomes relevant, I promise. Their bloodline, as they started to have offspring with humans, became more diluted, and Fae have much longer lifespans. So the population is pretty strongly human over fey and then there's obviously some people that are part human and part something else like nox and amaris and ash is also actually half fey as well okay um they do the very traditional like semiel is like a couple hundred years old but he looks young because lifespans i mean as long as he's hot i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding he's but. not unattractive I mean, he's a fae. Most, most of them are. I won't say most of them are pretty, because some fae are fucking horrifying. Most of the main character fae in this particular book are pretty. That's the way that I'll phrase that. Um. But it's interesting because you get like different characteristics from different regions. So like the northernmost fae. Uh, that I told you get glamoured into looking like demons, they have wings all the time. But normally they're these beautiful feathered wings versus when they're glamoured to look like a demon, they have the more traditional scary bat wings. Ah, okay. So you get those kind of So they have the traditional angel wings that turn into traditional demon wings. Right, via this glamour that the queen has put on the border because she's garbage. Yeah. Um, so you kind of have that dichotomy in that like you do have regional differences of things people that live in the north tend to be a bit darker skinned than people that live in the southern kingdom um intriguing and like obviously you have people that live in coastal areas that are like really tan because that's how that fucking works um but they say a few times that the very normal complexion for the southern kingdom i should have written down the name um is like more pale pink complexions so like very traditionally white complexions basically gotcha um that's part of the reason nox stands out so much not like because she has dark skin 
that and after she feeds, she can basically make herself prettier because succubus. Um, so there's this thing going on where the king is sending men into the southern kingdom because he believes that's where his heir is. The problem is that like no one is super sure like where that where he is or if he's even like alive or anything like that, right? So they go Amaris and her dark fae companions and her reaver companions go to this like temple thing. It's it's basically a temple. Um and it's cool cuz this temple is beautiful, right? Like, it's mm -hmm. this beautiful thing with this huge, huge, huge tree. Um, which is very fucking cool. And the tree is basically what they consider to be, like, the goddess. So the symbol of the goddess is these two parallel lines with an intersecting half circle. And you realize it's basically just a very simple tree. Okay. Um, I'm trying to find the bit with the temple so I can read to you the bit that I want. Uh, oh no, that's still Nox. Okay, please hold. That's more Nox stuff. I love all the perspective Dude, flipping. It just them? makes it hard to find the specific passages. Why read the book when you can have the book read to you? Yeah, I'm I'm looking for a specific thing that the like pre priestess lady says. Temple of the All Mother is what it's called. So the All Mother is like the goddess, effectively. Okay. Yeah, the Temple of the All Mother was no church, nor was it any common temple. The sacred space belonging to the goddess and her high priestess practically hummed with the intrinsic magic of the goddess's power. So it's just this big, massive, beautiful structure surrounded by, like, massive plants and things. It's very pretty. Um, but of course, because high priestesses can never just give straight answers, this woman is the most cryptic oh, bitch not. to ever bitch. <laughs> Of course not. Why would a high priestess ever give you a good answer? Right. So it's like Amaris. So Amaris like is like, wow, this tree is really pretty, and she, the the priestess is like, the goddess is beautiful, and she's like, the tree is the goddess, and you literally get the answer, yes, no. What have the worlds called our all mother? She is the tree of life. She is Bodhi, Genesis, and Yggdrasil. She is here with us now, and in the worlds between, she is our all-mother, from her all living things come. And it's like, ma'am, this was the most complicated fucking way that you could say yes, but also no. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, she did say yes and no. Right, but it's like, do you have... But like, that's the most clear-cut thing she says the whole time. <laughs> we do, in fact, love to see it. So... She tries to learn about the curse, the glamour thing. She asks about that. Amaris is, of course, very impatient about this, as she has a right to be, I argue. Um, where's the bit about the prince? Okay. So... Because she's trying to figure out where the king's son might be so that that way even if they can't convince the queen to stop killing his men his glamoured men then maybe they can like resolve that like she's trying different avenues of mm -hmm. stuff right yeah. so it's can you or will you tell me where the king's son is the woman paused she tilted her chin to look ever so slightly over her shoulder not facing Amaras as she spoke her solemn response the king has no son he has spent 20 years believing something to the contrary. Yes, he has. And of course, at this point, I'm like, excuse me? So then, there's some internal Did stuff. Did an illusion magic on him? To make so him think he had a child? That's what I'm wondering. But remember, this is before we know that. This is before we've met Morai. That's the queen. Ha ha ha. I can remember things. 
So there's some internal of Amaris being like, God fucking damn it, I hate this. Um, so then, does the king have an heir? He does, she responded, continuing to circle the tree. Why is the king certain it's a son? His beloved gave unto him a son. He sired a son? He did not. She did not look back as she continued their volleys. A son was born from the one he loved. A son was their result of their union. But King Ceres has no son. The king does not. Wait. <laughs> exactly! <laughs> Fucking exactly! Wait, hang on. Read, read that back real quick. Alright, I got you. So Amaris asks, does the king have an heir? The priestess says that he does. Amaris asks, okay. why is the king certain it's a son? The priestess says, his beloved gave unto him a son. Amaris asks, okay. Amaris asks, he sired a son. The priestess says, he did not. Amaris, oh. Amaris oh. says, a son was born from the one he loved. And the priestess clarifies, a son was the result of their union. But King Ceres has no son. The king does not. And then... So either the king isn't the king. I... I, I don't or, know. I don't I, know! I, okay, so, so I, I have a couple of theories here. The king could not be the king. Or she's referring the to the... The wife could have had an affair. Or she's referring to the illusion child. She could be referring to the illusion child. Or... Or... She could also be trying to tell you that the heir is a trans baby. Maybe. I'm also not totally convinced it's not Amaris because we know nothing of her parentage. Or Nox, actually, would be more appropriate. Because since we don't know anything about either of their lineage or their parentage, it honestly could happen. Yeah, it could. So, and of course, it's like, do you know where the heir is? I do not. Which, like, I'm not surprised. Of course she doesn't. Well, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Um, and of course, she, like, asks how she can find out, and she doesn't, like, get a great answer. She kind of turns of around and is not, like... because high priestesses are notoriously evil. Right. Well, she turns it around and starts, at, like, asks Amaris a few questions. Oh, yeah. And then she kind of has that, like, very sagey wisdom moment of, when you know the answer to my question, you will have the answer to yours. So she, the question is, why do you seek to aid the kingdoms? So, of course, uh -huh. it's like, of course, it's like, I'm a reaver. We've taken an oath for magical balance, and the curse is obvious imbalance. I was trained at uh, Uma Reeve. And the priestess stops her and goes, why do you seek to aid the kingdoms? As speaking about her as a person rather than her as a reaver. And she, like, doesn't have a great answer for that. So that's when Fair you, enough. So that's when you get the... When you know the answer to my question, you will have the answer to yours. So knowing why she wants to help the kingdoms is going to help her find the heir? Apparently. But yet the priestess doesn't know... Where, where the, the air, air is. is. Okay. Correct. Okay, I'm, chief. I'm, I'm guessing it has to do with, like, Amaris's or Nox's lineage in some way. It's possible. Well, and it's worth noting, the priestess doesn't really know who Amaris is. She doesn't know her name until the end of the encounter. So, like, she recognizes that she's fey touched obviously. And, like, that kind of thing. But she doesn't, like, know who Amaris is. She's just a cryptic bitch. Oh, Meepers is fighting Millennia? Oh, God. Oh, Meepers is gonna die so many times, isn't he? Oh, no. Everybody cheer for this man, even though he can't hear you. Um. Plot twist, she is the heir. Honestly, Sentinel, I could see it to where Amaris is the heir. Or Nox is the heir. Neither of those would ki I won't say they wouldn't surprise me because that's not entirely true, but they're both like reasonable plot lines, I think, at this juncture, because again, 
We met them at an orphanage. We know nothing about either of their parents. Other well, than the question becomes is when did the king start sending troops? Uh, around the time of the heir's theoretical birth, so about twenty years. That sounds more. It's closer. Nox. To, it's more Nox's age than Amaris's age. Cause no and didn't you say that the people in the north were typically darker skinned? Correct. Uh -huh. Um, whoever this is, they got a YouTuber or a Twitch. Meepers does have a Twitch, but I don't think he's live streaming right now. To answer your question, Sentinel. Um, he's in Discord, so I'd answer it for him. Beb, is Meepers live streaming Elden Ring? I'm being ignored. Beep. Ripperoni. Sentinel had a question for you, and I think I answered it correctly, but... Okay. I just want to make sure I'm not accidentally lying. Um, but yeah, no, that's what I mean, is, like, I really do think it could be, like, oh, it's Nox, or, like, oh, Nox has a brother, or something. You know, like, I could see it being something like that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's something else entirely. I don't know. There's only one book out. You got me. <laughs> um... It's something that I don't think is supposed to make sense with only book one. I think it's something that'll come to fruition in probably two or three. So that's kind of the nice thing with her plotting all four books at once is she can space stuff out like that. True. So. Excuse me. Um. But yeah, so a lot of the conflict between the nations feels almost, like, personal. In the sense of, like, the queen is glamouring the king's men to look like demons and slaughtering them. And the king really, really thinks that the heir is in the southern kingdom for some fucking reason. I don't know. Now the question becomes is what the fuck did the queen do? I, besides be a general bitch? Yeah, I don't know. I also don't know, here's the thing, I don't know if it was the Southern Queen and the Northern King that were married and had the heir. They don't really specify that. So like, his queen or could be a different person. Well, that, that's interesting that the queen who fathered his heir could be of a different kingdom. Like, right. ruling a different kingdom, to be completely honest with you, because that's generally not how things go. Well, that's what I mean, is no one really specified either way so far. It has not been the most plot-relevant point yet. It'll, it'll, it's a long-term plot, I think. Um, because a lot of the plot of book one was get an audience with the queen and get her to stop killing people. <laughs> nah. But I'm saying, like, What's the air, the air thing took a bit of a backseat to that because, you know, it can only be so long. Yeah, fair enough. Listen, which, especially knowing that this is going to be a four book series, totally fine with that. So. Um. But yeah, it's interesting because. There's a lot of geopolitics in the world, obviously, but a lot of it that we interact with is pretty character motivated, which is fascinating to me. Because of course, like, the queen has men in whatever, and like, there is a pretty cool map at the beginning of the book. Kind of the way like Eric. Yeah, kind of like, oh, that's gonna be blown out all to hell. I'm gonna just send you a picture of this because you're not gonna be able to see it on stream. I appreciate that. So, ah, uh, there we go. The Northern Kingdom is Rascot, and the Southern Kingdom is Fairhold. I forgot there was a map on the front that I could have just looked. There we go. There's a map. There you go, Thomas. Um... So for context, if you see stone and the little air, the little dot above it that says, uh, it's like U A I M H Reeve, that's where the Reavers hang out. 
And then okay. Fairlay, just below that, is where the orphanage is at the beginning of the book. So I can post this in Discord for anyone who wants to look at it too, by the way. I know that this is like not helpful if you can't see the map. Um, but like, it's fascinating, right? Because it's a big continent, but at the same time, like, it's not Alasia big. It's not Aragon big. <laughs> not that it fucking needs to be. That, that map was massive for God knows what reason. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. It was so hard to keep track of everything because the map was just gigantic. Um, Interesting that the people in the north have the darker skin tone when the desert's in the south. Correct. And I don't know what that's about. Hmm. Um, I think, I think in this, it's supposed to be a context of like lineage rather than anything. I mean, that's fair. It's just my brain thinks, you know, of just how no regular. for sure yeah. um well i i think i like probably people in coastal towns are probably comparatively less pale right because sun duh yeah um honestly i think what a lot of it has to do with is a lot of the fey particularly that live in rascot are referred to as the quote-unquote dark fey so okay that might be a little bit more literal than one would initially imagine, you know? Yeah. Um. So, well, of course, Nox being part succubus. Um, I... No one, like, really explicitly said that that was part of Dark Fey, but it's kind of implied. So... But yeah, no, I do also find that interesting and also a little bit confusing. Um, but I mean, not that it not that it isn't interesting. It's just it gets my brain going. Like, um, hmm? right. Well, this because is, this is a little contradictory to what I am used to, but I will also roll with it because you know, races can change also, based off the of fantasy world. I said also, it's a fucking fantasy book. Right. Um, what what I will be interested to see with that is is that just a world choice you made, or is there a lore reason? You know. Ooh, I hope there's more. <laughs> I think either are entirely possible. It could easily be this is just the way I wanted to do it. It could also easily be. Um this lineage thing happened in the history and this is where everybody settled after that happened and since the lineage gets continued everybody looks like this very true I, I could absolutely see it going either way particularly because we only have one book at the moment both are super feasible so I don't know. It's really interesting to speculate about stuff like this when you only have one book, because on one hand, it's like, this is really cool, but on the other hand, I don't know shit. <laughs> um, Isn't it a great time? I mean, it really is, genuinely. So, Plus, this means when, assuming y'all liked book one, um, I, you specifically, if you go back and read book one, obviously, um, yeah. It means we can do book two when it comes out in February. I am definitely down to read it. It's just, you know, kind of moving across state. No. I am, like, not even kidding. I assumed you probably hadn't read it because of all of the chaos. <laughs> um, if you, because we have until February for book two, if you want to just wait and get the fancy expanded I might edition wait to get the fancy expanded edition that comes out in literally that comes out in literally august yeah i think i'll just wait yeah here let me send you the link to her website so you can peruse there you go um yeah I said, I don't mind having both, and both is kind of fun for me, because I followed the series since before it came out. But, like, it's, 
yeah, I don't blame you at all for just wanting to get the the expanded, whatever she's calling it. Like that. I'm just gonna call it the correctified edition. Version two. The revised edition, I think, is yeah what it's technically called. But either way, um, for those that do not have the book and would like to read it and just want to buy one of them, definitely buy the revised edition. I love the original and I'm super glad that I have it, but I am imagining that the rest of the series will probably function based off of the revised edition. Um, cause she actually pushed back the release dates of two, three, and four in order to revise one. Which tells me that that's definitely the version that she's gonna be using. Yeah. I think technically first edition will still be like quote unquote canon. But I think there will be extra shit in the new one that will probably be relevant. So. Also, the cover's just pretty, and you get to have uh, stained edges and stuff on your book, which is just fun. Pretty book. Yep, the, if you get the revised edition from Barnes & Noble, you get Audrin's novella, a gold foil moon on the cover, and the edges will be stained. Ooh. Obviously, that only applies if you have access to a Barnes & Noble, but... Um, the, honestly, the big reason that I push for Barnes & Noble with this specifically is because um because she's like a smaller kind of newer artist quote unquote like this is her first published book it supports her more to get it through barnes and noble than it does to get it through like amazon interesting she has said that several times it literally says on her website if you live in the u.s or have access to barnes and noble this is the option that supports me the most as an author so I'm guessing she doesn't get as much from Amazon purchases as she does from Barnes & Noble's ones. Probably not. So, having said that, Amazon allow is basically going to let her make sure that the revised edition is going to be available in, like, more countries and languages and stuff. So, like, you know, it's a double-edged sword. Like, you, 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 you get some, you lose some. Yeah. Doesn't Amazon sell books at a loss? At a loss to Amazon Sentinel or at a loss to the uh, the author? I really don't know, to be honest. Like, the honest answer is I don't know. Um, yeah, me either. It sounds like she benefits more from Barnes & Noble purchases than Amazon ones. That's about all I can tell you. So... So this music is a vibe. I like it. Um, but no. It's... I'm really interested to see more of, like, the world. Because what's interesting is because these girls were, like, not particularly well-educated or anything as children, they really leave the orphanage and realize that they don't know anything about the world hardly at all just like oh shit we don't know jack that's literally what happens i'm not even kidding that is effectively how that goes so like not that uh, uh, kind of as they should right and they do like travel and like learn more but like they can only learn so much of at once you know yep. uh becca was talking about apparently they sell books at a loss to put oh no i do know what you're talking about I have not verified that for myself, but based on conversations Becca and I have had, I am inclined to think probably, or at least that that is partially correct. Um, don't, like, like I said, don't take my word as law. I haven't looked into it. I truly don't know. Um, but I think there is something to that, which is part of, which is probably part of the reason why it's better to go through Barnes and Noble. AKA the reason I will be owning physical copies of all of these books, probably. Good. I also do, I don't know if you do this, Thomas. I do the thing where I don't care if I have it as an ebook or a physical copy, but once I start a series, that whole series has to be in the same format. Yes. So, like, because I bought this as a physical copy, 
the rest of this series will be physical copies. I I have mixed series copies. I hate it. I'm and not judging I, you for I, it. I, I it. hate it. No, no, no. I hate it, and I wish that I didn't. Yeah, like but I would because when when <laughs> when you're a broke college kid and you're trying to save money, and Kendall gives you the option to something that you've already bought in a physical copy for like ten dollars cheaper, which will get you an extra meal. You're just like, mm -hmm, I oh, wonder. Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, and like, obviously, I would never like judge or ridicule someone for doing it. But it personally but makes me, I hate it. It personally makes it. me a little uh, mentally, ugh, right? It, get, it gives me the ick to use a uh, apparently upcoming my, slang term. My my OCD brain does not like it because then it's just like, wait, where's the rest of the series? Well, yeah, either literally. when I'm scrolling through my Kindle library or I'm looking at my bookshelf, I'm like, wait a second, I know that series has more books. Don't I have that book? And then right. I go and check. I'm like, yes, I do have that book. Well, it's like I read Harry Dresden that whole series it's like 17 books i read it over quarantine and those are all ebooks those are all e because i fucking refuse to have a series be partially ebooks and partially physical books unless there's nothing i can do about it right i, just I don't like don't you. like it well like a lot of my stephen king books are physical copies um because i kind of intentionally collect his books so a lot of them are physical copies. Also, my brother gives me Stephen King books for Christmas a lot, which, like, don't get me wrong, very solid gift choice. But it means it's physical copy. Well, I mean, that... You know, actually, I think... For next book club, it will be my first Stephen King novel. Oh, shit. Yeah, I haven't uh, read anything of his. Sorry in advance for how dark it might be, because I haven't read it, so I don't know. Uh, uh, um... Hi, you're talking to someone who studied the Holocaust for how many years in college? I am just telling you. I, I think I can handle my dark. I'm just telling I'm you. I'm literally reading one of the novels that was for my Holocaust history course for fun right now. Yeah. Uh, so Sorry, someone just texted me and this person just goes to bed like sort of early, so I'm trying to not ignore them. No, you're good. Um. Yes. I'm currently getting lost in the power washing sauce, so you're fine. Yo, valid. What it are you power washing? It makes my brain go burr at the carousel. Ooh, you, you can turn the carousel on. The carousel is already on. Like, it stays on. You can turn it off. It's so much more fun to think to do this while it's moving. No, but I'm just I'm just saying you can turn it on and off, which I think is I a didn't fun know I feature. could turn it off. No, I'm keeping it on. Well, I think for some I spots, ad man, I am sadistic. I think there'll probably be a, from what I've seen of that level, there's a couple of spots that it might be easier to have it off. But I digress. We'll find out. But um, right now, I'm able to do the thing. Yeah. But no, it's I'm a big fan of. I don't care. I don't have a huge preference between ebooks and physical books. I just, if I'm going to own an entire series, I want it to be one or the other, basically. Yes, yeah, Sentinel. I am getting lost in the power washing sauce. <laughs> I mean, he's quoting you, so. Yes. That uh, that is something I will say. I don't care. Yep. Quote me. We do have a quote bot. I still don't know how to have it spit out random quotes throughout the stream because I keep forgetting to look up how to do that. <sighs> but. Reminds me of my Bojangles incident. Oh my god. Do, do I even want to know? If do Sentinel, I even want to know Sentinel? If Sentinel wants to tell the story, he can. Um, I think my big wish for the rest of this series is I hope the romantic progression between Amaris and Nox feels a bit more organic, if that makes sense. Instead of just, I haven't seen you for two years, let's kiss. Well, not even that. It's like, Nox admits to romantic feelings before they get separated, but Amaris' feelings kind of develop while they're away? Which is fine, it just feels a little random. 
And it's one of those things of, like, human emotions are fucking weird, so I don't totally discount that something like that could happen. I just wanted, like, one or two scenes to build to it a little bit. Instead of it just kind of happening. Sentinel, really? You you hyped that up, and then it was just nothing. <laughs> Bojang, uh, Sentinel also fights somebody for some Bojangles. Sentinel really, I mean, really likes I would Bojangles. Too. Dude, our Bojangles kind of sucks, though. Oof, rip you. The food is fine, but whenever we order DoorDash Bojangles, they always forget something. Like, they forget our sauce, or they, like, they forgot Zach's fries one time. Like, they forgot my fries last time. And his Ooh. sauce. <laughs> so I'm like, dude, we need to stop fucking DoorDashing Bojangles. It always goes badly for us. <laughs> I was hungry. I didn't hype shit. I just love Bojangles. That Sentinel does love Bojangles. That is very true. You know, fair enough. Um, but yeah, as said, I'm trying. To, there's you anything know what's else. nice right now. I'm I'm just I have the merry I have the carousel on. Yeah. And I've got the continuous stream on, and it's just cleaning itself. Good shit. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to say about the book, but I think we hit a lot of the big points. I obviously, don't get me wrong, I skipped so many story bits because I can't physically cover an entire book of stuff in one stream. I was about to say, that that might be a little impossible. Yeah, so assuming we want to do book two of this as a book club, assuming we're still doing a book club come February, go read book one. It's fun. <laughs> if nothing else, it is a fun read. It took me, like, two or three days tops. It really wasn't that bad. And I'm a quick reader, so maybe take that at your own grain of salt. But, like, it really wasn't that bad of a read. It's not, like, super heavy language-wise. It's not super hard to understand outside of a few awkward phrasings, which is just, bit, like, very minor and very, like, easy to just move on from. I so. mean, you can, you can ask Zephyr and Jess. I basically ingested red, white, and royal blue in a day, so I mean... That is on the list of things, by the way. It's such a good book. Oh my god, I love the gaities. Oh, They're I want... So, uh, uh, I want they're to... They're so cute. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out what to do. Um. <laughs> Fun fact, one of the things on that list was someone suggested The Handmaid's Tale. Do it, yes, please, please, please. It's a I little have it too on my shelf. Thomas, it's a little too culturally relevant right now. You know, fair <laughs> enough. But my, that might be the reason to bring it out. I'm gonna wait until I'm a little less angry about the country, and then we can maybe do that. <laughs> fair enough. Um, might still your controller, my Xbox One, babe. Here. Here. It's time to clean off some houses. Um, but yeah, no, I, I told him before, I want to read A Handmaid's Tale. I don't really want to read it right now. <laughs> Come on, no. you don't want to read about forced birth right now? I do not, actually. Um, Come on. But no. The long story short, as far as The Night and Its Moon is concerned, absolutely recommend. Obviously, it's not for everybody, but that's just books. If you like fantasy, and you want a fun time, and you're okay with some 18 plus content, i absolutely pick this up. It's like not super expensive, it's like a very normal, reasonable book cost. You can get it on Amazon, you can get it on Barnes & Noble if you're in the States, or if you're somewhere with a Barnes & Noble. Like, it's got pretty cover. We get the prettier version in like, less than two months. So if you want to wait for that, that I also completely understand that. Especially, again, because we don't get book two until next year. So, I mean, just closing thoughts is just, I think it's a really fun read. It's like, obviously, every book has its, like, things that I can pick to death. But, like, this is just fun. I don't know. One of these days, I'm going to have to do the first book of the Akatar series, and it's going to be really fucking funny. Surprised Becca didn't show back up when you mentioned Akatar. She fucking might. She might. Um, Wait, we have to say it three times. Akatar, Akatar, Akatar. Um. 
like no Becca. True. Agatar is very much a book series where like I don't necessarily consider it super highbrow writing, but it's fun. It is very 18 plus. You know, we, uh, we uh, I can get behind this. It's funny because I'm like, I learned about that series via like TikTok and Instagram or whatever. And I'm like, all right, fine. I fuck with some high fantasy. Sure. I knew about it from Zari. It does feel like a book Zari would like. <laughs> I, I can yeah, see that. It's actually one of her favorites. It, I mean, it's fun. Like again, is it the most highbrow thing I've ever read? Of fucking course not. But it's a lot of fun. Um, book one is actually not that sexual. And then... Oh. Oh. I know, Sammy. I'm sorry, hun. You know you're always welcome in here. I hope you're doing okay, all considering. Um, but, like, book one has, like, a lot of stuff that happens... But it's, like, really not that, like, lewd. And then some of the later books, it's like, oh, there it is. <laughs> so it, it happens. Know. It happens. The, uh, the last one in particular is a little bit like that. And apparently this is the p version of the third one that got published. <laughs> or the third one, the last one that got published is the toned down version. <laughs> Which is very funny. The tone, the toned down version. Which is only as funny as it is when you understand how spicy the last book is. <laughs> okay. Uh, you'll if you ever read them, I would love your thoughts because I I think you would enjoy them and I think you'd enjoy. I mean, I'm definitely going to one of these days. I think you'd enjoy poking fun at some bits too. So, yay. Mm, I may not go all the way till 11, because it's, we're already at two and a half hours, but we'll see. But, to give y'all... I could always throw on a chill game. If you wanted to, that is. Uh, the only reason I might say no to that is just for cleanliness of stream reasons. Yeah, I, it was just a suggestion that popped into my head. No, for sure. It's not a bad idea at all. It's just since this was a night really specifically dedicated to Bookstream. Yeah. Brighten my webcam again now that it's dark outside. Hurt. Um, but just to give y'all. Ooh. Hi, Sammy. Do we like the new Uwu, by the way? Because I think it's way funnier than the old one. It's grand. You can thank Sentinel for that. He recorded that for me. It's not his Bless voice, you, Sentinel. I don't think. But Well, unless I'm a total liar. I think he said it's from something. Um. Anyway. <coughs> There's also an Uwu-fucking-Wu version. Um, But I didn't want to have two Uwu redeems. That felt like too much chaos. I want to find a way. I don't know if I can do it. I'll have to do some poking around. If I could figure out a way to have one sound redeem and have it be a 50-50 on which one it uh, plays, then that would be fun. Oh, okay. See, I knew you said it was Grendel from Warframe. I couldn't remember if you said someone else had recorded it like that or if you had. I fucking love it, for the record. Uh, yeah, summary, here we go. Alright, so I'm gonna read you just, oh, that's really bright, I'm gonna read you just a little bit of the very, like, beginner plot of, not the beginner plot, the very basic, like, here's an idea of what the story is for Firestarter. So, Andy and Charlene, quote, Charlie McGee, are a father-daughter pair on the run from a government agency known as The Shop. During his college years, Andy had participated in a shop experiment dealing with, quote, Lot 6. It's a drug with hallucin hallucinogenic effects similar to LSD. The drug gave his future wife, Victoria, minor telekinetic abilities and him a telepathic form of mind control he refers to as the push. 
They also developed telepathic abilities, and then their powers were limited, but then the daughter is, like, stronger. So it's about, like, the, the daughter for the most part, I think. I'm obviously not going to go beyond that. That may already be a little bit more than you're, like, quote-unquote supposed to know, truthfully, but just to give a teaser, if you will. A teaser. Um, and obviously... Anyone that knows me knows that I will sing the praises of Stephen King. He's not a perfect writer, but I love the way that he writes. I always have a lot of fun. I will sing this man's praises. You will sing Stephen King's praises the same way that I will always sing Margaret Atwood's. Yeah, it's a similar thing. So, like... I... Of course there's Stephen King on this list of shit. Like, of course, right? It's me. Hello. Um, also, if you've seen the movie The Shining and you've never read the book, the movie is not the same. So, would recommend the book if you liked the movie. Um, sure, my family thinks backwards. Unfortunately, that happens, yeah. I, I wish I could say something that would help Sammy, but please, like, please know that you do have, like, people in, in your corner. I guess is the only way I can think to put that eloquently. Here's John. Fun fact, Sammy. That line was improv The Here's Johnny is not in the book of The Shining. That was a line that the actor uh, improv Which, like, is a good line. It became it's very so iconic. so iconic now. Right, but that's why it's funny that it's not in the book to me. That scene is in the book, but it's not. Um, he doesn't say that. Well, like, he doesn't use an axe in the book, either. So. Yeah, one of these days I want to figure out how to fix these captions, but the, like, Q&A of my thing is broken is not helpful. Okay. <laughs> it is in so many shit. Well, it became such an iconic line. That was how people referenced The Shining in a lot of cases, I think. I have not seen The Shining. I haven't either, actually, but I've read the book and I know the movie because it's been around for ages, of course. I only know the Here's Johnny line because it's just such an it's iconic, iconic thing. Yeah. There's some fucked up shit. It's cool. Mm. They just made a movie of the sequel, too. Oh. Uh, Doctor Sleep is the sequel to The Shining. Interesting. It's without actually like spoiling too much. The kid from The Shining grows up, and the uh, Doctor Sleep is the sequel. Doctor Sleep is huh? This, it's what basically what happens to the kid when he becomes an adult. Oh. It's way fucking more than that, but any more than that ruins several things that you're not supposed to know before you read the book, so I will cut myself You off. know, fair enough. The movie itself is a meme. The thing is, though, Sammy, it's a meme because of how iconic it is. Because The Shining was so scary and such a big deal when it came out. It's like how we all make memes about, like, the Aliens movies. But, like, Alien was really fucking scary when it happened, and, like... Any discussion on Alien, I will hand off to Becca readily because that is her thing, and I only know a little bit, and I know most of what I know because of her. But it's a similar thing. Anyway, long story short, the shiny never scared me as a kid. I mean, it depends on what scares you. I I had a friend in high school who watched The Grudge as a kid, and the Grudge noise as an adult still scares her to this day. I think The Grudge is, like, one of the least scary movies I've ever watched, but I also watched it when I was 16. Or as an older teenager, rather. Um, but anyway, the long and short, I do recommend this book. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, if y'all have additional thoughts, like, I know Becca's in Hawaii and she's doing a whole bunch of shit. Um, so, like, if y'all want to continue talking about this book for those that read it, or if you want to read it later and then talk about it, we have a channel for that in the Discord. Just head to the book club channel. I will talk about this book pretty much all day long. Um, especially once like more people have read it. So that way like people can form their own opinions and not just listen to mine as well. Which obviously... Especially, you know, when I, she's supposed to be at work and just does it anyways. You what? 
Especially when you're supposed to be at work and you're going to talk about it anyways. I mean, sure. But... <laughs> the ring fucked me as a kid. I haven't seen the ring. I'm a bureau. It looks fucking terrifying, though. Yeah, of course. Um... But yeah, no, like, I'm always up to chat about books in general, and I really enjoyed this one, so I'm happy to dig into it. Um, like I said before, it's got its flaws. I'm interested to see if any of them get fixed. Um, I think some of them will probably remain because they are too character important to get rid of, but I think as long as they're handled fine, I'm not too worried about it, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't think we're going to stop sexualizing Nox because she's a succubus. Like, I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, I mean, that that's kind of her job. Right. But I'm hoping as she develops more as a character and starts to care a bit more about herself outside of just finding Amaris, I'm hoping she gets more self-value and self-worth. So that way she can stop equating like her worth to her power quite so much. Mm. Like it's a character flaw, and she's supposed to have one of those, of course. So gotta make them seem relatable. I mean, to a point, she is. Oh yeah, she's someone who has very little family, which is relatable to some people. She's had to fend for herself in a lot of scenarios and work with people she doesn't like to get what she wants that's relatable to some like she, I it's very much one of those things of like obviously her situation is not relatable because fucking duh but like the way that these characters interact with the world is something that I think is able to be sympathized with even if like you can't put yourself in their shoes which just to me says they're good characters for the most part mm. I'll also ramble about characters all fucking day so like God, please. I was looking to see who we could raid, and I went to open somebody's stream to see what they were doing, and I couldn't, like, click mute. I had to drag the slider down, because fucking I don't know why. We love to see it. <laughs> Alright. Alright, we'll do... There's only like two people up right now, so I will do a poll and just let y'all decide between them, I think. I'm not going to be able to fit what games they're playing in the poll, so I'm just going to put it up and I'll tell you what they're playing, because one of these guys has a really long fucking Twitch name. Okay, go! <laughs> God bless DMCA free music. Can you imagine if I was just talking in total silence? Ooh. That might have been just a bit too awkward. I would have been uncomfy. Like, I don't know how y'all would have... I don't know if y'all would have even noticed, but, like, I would have been uncomfortable. <laughs> it's just also nice to have kind of, like, some background noise on. Oh, for sure, yeah. Well, like, it's good if I have a lapse in talking, or, like, mm -hmm. if we're formulating thoughts, like, if I'm explaining something to you, it keeps you from, like, feeling like you have to reply immediately. Yeah. That's just good. And this is very non-obtrusive as well. I'm kind of impressed that we didn't derail more than we did, to be honest. <laughs> I tried to keep us on topic. No, you didn't. Well, and it's the whole thing, right? And, like, obviously this is not shade at you, but it's, like, I don't necessarily know where to guide the conversation because I don't know how much of the book I need to explain to go where I want to go sometimes. Fair enough. So it's, like, okay, 
explaining geopolitics. Oh god, how much of this do I need to explain? <laughs> Versus, like, if Becca and I ever discuss Akatar on stream, I, she's probably got that book, like, fucking memorized, so I probably won't have to explain as much to her, but we'll probably have to give, like, a TLDR to chat. Oh, more than likely. Right, no, it's, but it will be different having to give chat somewhat of an explanation versus having to explain to you the gravity of something and then going from there. So, mm. it's all good and all fine, it's just different. So, I said. But you know if I was going to give you shit, I would just give you shit. I wouldn't say it nearly that nicely, so. <laughs> exactly. Like I said, I kind of came in here assuming that you hadn't read it, because when the fuck would you have had time to read it? <laughs> yeah. So, hopefully you have time to read Firestarter, though. Uh, if nothing oh, else... I definitely will. If nothing else, you get the experience of reading Stephen King at least once in your life. True. That man kind of freaks my dad out a little bit, I think. Because <laughs> he's like, sometimes the story's really good, but it gets really dark. And I'm like, yeah, I, I'm aware. Dude. Hi, welcome to Margaret Atwood. <laughs> well, so what it is, is so my dad doesn't really read like horror, right? So he he's not going to read The Shining like I did, right? Um, But he Fair has enough. read a few King books. So he re was reading, I don't know if he finished it, the, the Gunslinger series that he wrote, which is a bit more like fiction fantasy as kind of. And he read, um, The Talisman was the first one that he ever r read. And I've read The Talisman. Okay. And there's some whack shit in that book. <laughs> like, it's good and it's well done. <laughs> but, like, if that's your first King book, I could see... I could see you kind of getting to some certain part and just going, oh, shit! <laughs> I, it feels very reasonable. I mean, it's just like how a, a, a lot of people's first introduction to Margaret Atwood was The Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. And I'm just like, uh, oh. This was arguably not a great place to start, but have fun. I'm like, you know, I respect the choice. I respect the drip, Chief. But also, yeah. you could have chose something a whole lot, you know, less Nicer. Um, scarring. Let's yeah. go with that term. I think the thing that you run into with King is not that all of his stuff is dark but there's dark corners in most of the things that he writes or at least a lot of the stuff i've read of his so far i should say yeah i think the thing that i love most about atwood is she takes things that you normally wouldn't consider to come about into fruition and actually makes it plausible yeah. in how this thing could happen like yeah. with the Republic of Gilead, or like how in um, how in Oryx and Creek, how that world got absolutely fucked up. Yeah. Um, and like it's it's so interesting because you wouldn't think that humanity could get like that, and like you really choose to not believe that it could be that way, but kind kind of as we're seeing today. Yeah, uh, I mean, it just, it just, you know, it's an interesting... The Republic of Gilead is actually feasible. It's an interesting... And it's like the thing uh, that Atwood always puts into her books is, it may not be what's going to happen, but she explains it in a way that it could. It's an interesting... And she makes it make sense. It's an interesting thing of, like, this is not reality, but this also might be more plausible than you think it is. Mm-hmm. Um, it does another one I still have to read from King. But I've heard that some people really like that one and some people really don't. So. Children of the Corn. Uh, have I read that one? I really don't remember, which means probably not. My list of books to read by this man are so long, I just want to read, like, everything he's ever written, which is probably not a good way to do that. But it's just, you know, it's, it's just a little bit not feasible as a treat. I'm aware. I think the problem is, is I want to read some of the stuff that is less known, but I also want to read a lot of the big classics. Fair so enough. that makes the list kind of long because he's written a lot of classics. <laughs> uh, fun hot take. Compared to some of his other work, Christine was mid. It was fine. It I was good. Know. It's one of those things of like, I don't think it's a bad book by any means. 
I don't think it stands quite next to some of the other stuff he's written. But like also, it's like fucking impossible to write everything at the same level all the time. Like some stories are just different. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. Not knowing it's a horror book makes it a lot worse, Sammy. Holy crap. But anyway, y'all voted for uh, going to see Celebrock. Um, he is an 18 plus stream, just to let y'all know. Working on a dark tower. That's what, it thank you, Aya. Also, welcome, hello. Dark tower is the series my dad's reading or was reading. I don't know if he still is. Uh, he was in book like four or five, I think. Anyway. No. Just a heads up for Cell. He is an 18 plus streamer. Oh. No, I changed it. Do changed raid, raid. Do raid and do exclamation point sub raid. There's a sub raid command now. Oh. So it uh, looks. Excuse me? Oh, Wait. okay. No, it looks fucked on stream elements because stream elements doesn't have a sub. But if you copy and paste it, Got it looks you. like that. Because I wanted. I got this. Because I wanted the boy. Um, Sentinel and I figured this out the other day. Um, Aya, if you don't have a sub, you'll have to use the, uh, the rainbow hearts. Those are available everywhere on Twitch. Hello, Sapphire! You are coming in as I am getting ready to raid out, because we started early tonight. Um, but you are welcome to stick around for the raid, and in fact, I encourage it, because we're about to go say hi to Cell. Figured it was worth testing. Yeah, no, I don't mind you trying it at all. It's just the way it's built... That emote is specific to if you have a sub. But anyway, we are gonna go see Cell. So of course, everyone give him the normal love and respect that you give me. Um, obviously, I really, truly, I appreciate y'all coming and hanging out with me, whether or not you've read the book. Obviously, shout out to Leaf who came and just vibed in voice chat, even though he knew nothing. <laughs> love to see it. Um, in fact, love to see it. Uh, can you do exclamation point book club one more time for everybody? Yep. I will be putting an event in the Discord just like this one, but there's your dates for book club. Uh, if you want to do it again, we are going to be reading Firestarter by Stephen King, and we're going to be doing that on July 22nd. I might knock that down to starting at 7.30 or 8 instead of trying to start at 7. I didn't realize how potentially not feasible 7 was going to be. Uh, on my end of things. So, but anyway. I will let y'all know about that. Basically closer to the date when I start doing all of my promo. But you have this Discord, and the socials, and the YouTube, all in the chat. I don't know why my Twitch is being an absolute piece of shit right now. Um. But we will hit the raid command. Of course, make sure you have either your rainbow hearts or your dabbing boy. Gonna throw those in there one more time. Yeah, it's fine. We're gonna see if I can get through this ad long enough so that I can actually see the raid come in. But I will go ahead and hit the ending soon screen. And I will be back on Monday as of now. Next week is a little weird and tentative, but I'll, I'll keep y'all updated as I know things. next